In the recent history of the AFL, the Geelong Cats have been winning premierships. The Fremantle Dockers have been contending, but not quite getting there. That's why today we see two great rivals coming up against each other head to head. But for the first time, it's Fremantle who'll start favourites down here at the Cattery. The fortress that has been so dominant for Geelong in recent times is under attack. That's why today's game, Geelong Cats versus the Fremantle Dockers, is going to be a beauty. respect them so much. For whatever reason, there's been um, this really close, tense rivalry more recently, and we certainly love playing against them. Scullo has just jumped Valentine. No doubt they're a great side. They're physical, um, they're contested ball monsters. The defenders love playing on their forwards, Hawkins versus McFarlane, and we love playing on their mids, you know, Mundy versus Selwood. It's always a great clash playing against them. Oh. fierce contest and I enjoy rolling up to them. Pretty significant rivalry there and, and we're hopeful that we can play good enough footy to challenge them over the next couple of years as well. Last kick for goal! He lets it rip! It's on line! Just off line! One point! Geelong win! That was then, this is now as the Fremantle Dockers come on to Simmons Stadium. The sun is coming out, the wind is blowing a little bit. It is ideal conditions for a battle between two of the best credential teams in the AFL. Fremantle versus Geelong, Jason Dunstall, the four-time Hawthorne Premiership superstar, standing alongside me at Hall of Famer. Jason, it's a great day. I can't wait for this game of football. It's going to be a belter. Yeah, looking forward to a beauty. They do have some recent history, these two teams, but I'm probably a little more interested in, in the last week, effectively. Yeah. Uh, Will it take its toll? They were so good last week, the Dockers, but it was a bruising encounter in hot conditions. Mm. We saw what happened to Port Adelaide against Sydney back at home yesterday. They just didn't have the energy they normally had. So Fremantle are going to need to bring that again today against a team that's going to be savage after copping around one thumping. Well, you can see the Cats are coming out now from... There's the, the bells gone, the bells, beach bells rolling. And maybe it's hell's bells. ACDC might be playing. I'm and not the, sure. they got flags here everywhere as well, Ed. Oh, they've got them going. They've got them going back to the first fleet, in fact, here. <laughs> They've got the VFA flags from 1833 all the way through. It's all happening. Strength, power, skill, the mighty cats. And they've done a great job down here, Geelong, in getting Simmons Stadium to become a genuine stadium these days. And as I said in the intro, it has been a fortress. And the Cats fans have filled the seats up. We're going to be in for a big day today. This team, beaten by Hawthorne last week, have, for the first time in a long time, got some question marks above them. It is a fortress, but perhaps not for uh, the Dockers, who won a final here a couple of seasons ago. Three changes for the Cats. Bartell misses with that concussion. Motlop, we know that incident during the week. And also Rivers go out. Mackie Stanley and Hall and Smith come in. And as we take a look at the Dockers lineup, just the one change for them. That's Sheridan going out and Tabner. A key forward comes in, which is uh, interesting given the Cats have lost a key defender. And Manny DeBoer will start as the sub. We've been good enough to get some time with the coach of the Geelong Footy Club, Chris Scott. Welcome to you, Scotty. Thanks, Jason. Now, uh, very keen to see Reece Stanley have his first official outing for the club. And you've been bullish about getting him into the lineup, and you're excited about what he's going to bring, particularly in that ruck role as well as playing forward. Yeah, for the first time in a long time, we've got a lot of flexibility in that ruck position where playing blitz halves back at the start of the game, but he'll spend some time in the ruck. We've got big Dawson Simpson plus Mitch Clark and Reece Stanley. So we're probably going to need all, th all uh, four of them against um, Big Aaron Sanderlands. Chris, you have a, a game against the Hawks like you did last week. There's nothing better to come home and the warrior in you, the competitor in you, I can just see you've got the steely result. Been some interesting things happening during the week. You've stood strong with Motlop. You had the issue with Mitch Clark as well. It's, it's built up into a bit of a cauldron today, hasn't it? Yeah, we've had a tough week. I reckon our values have been tested, Eddie, and there's only one way really to truly respond to it. I think we've responded the right way during the week, but what really counts is what you do on the field, and uh, I'm very confident our boys are up for it against a very, very good opposition. Yeah, speaking of that opposition, they were super impressive last week. What's your number one priority against them today? Uh, defend better than they do. I think you know the trap you can fall into against Frio is say they've got a really good defence, we've got to find a way through it. We've got to defend better. We defended poorly last week. Even when we played our best footy the last few years, we've been a really strong defensive team and um, we need to get back to that. Chris, we'll let you go, mate. Looking forward to it. You've got me fired up here <laughs> just listening to you. It has been a tough week, but that's when tough men stand up. Good luck, mate. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, Jason. Chris Thanks, Scott. Buddy.
Well, there you go, Josh. That just, uh, be a that's end. a beauty, isn't it? It's all going. He had the uh, the old mad stare of the halfback <laughs> flanker going there. Let's go up to the commentary box now. Dwayne Russell is calling the action one of the best in the business. And alongside him, the man who won two premierships as a coach down here at Geelong and three as a player at the Essendon Football Club, a special welcome to Mark Bomber-Thompson. Welcome, boys. Thanks, Eddie. Yes, the house that Bomber built. He brought the two premierships that brought prosperity to this town and half built this ground. Uh, Bomber, welcome back home. I'm sure you've got a lot of people wishing you well when you walked in today. Yeah, it's good to be back, Dwayne, and it was right. I, I got uh, held up a few times trying to get into the ground, but <laughs> people saying uh, well done and hello and thanks. So it's been good. I'm glad they gave you park right next to your statue. You just cruised in. What are you looking forward to most matchup-wise today? Where's my statue, mate? Yeah, just out the front. Yeah. It's still being built. They're uh, getting the bronze ready. I think um, the big matchup to, my, to me is uh, Selwood and who, yeah. who he plays on. He's got a number of players who he could play on, but certainly uh, it would be great if him and Fife sort of matched up, wouldn't it, and to see who won that battle. Absolutely. So let's hope for that one. Selwood v Fife. He is probably the best player in the competition right now, Nat Selwood Fife. So let's or Fife. Hey, yeah. yeah. Well, you could argue about that, but many would say that Nat Fife could be the number one by the end of this season. Another matchup we're looking forward to should be a ripper. Luke McFarlane and Tom Hawkins. He's uh, he's a very good defender, obviously. Um, he's quick. Uh, he's quite strong as well, but he likes to play off me generally a little bit. Um, I'm probably going to look to try and um, get up the ground and uh, and try and uh, work him uh, on the way back through uh, through my leading pattern. So um, always find Luke really tough to play on. So uh, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, Tom Hawkins is um, you know is a unique player. He's, he's an enormously Formidable opponent. Um, I think he weighs about 110 kilos. So, um, yeah, I'm certainly giving up um, a fair amount of size when you uh, compete against someone like that. So it's more about using your other strengths, which are, uh, for me, a bit of leap, a bit of agility, and, and just tr trying not to engage in, a, I guess, a wrestle with someone of that size. Similarly with Mitch Clark as well. They're both big boys. So myself and Michael Johnson don't want to get in too many wrestles. We're back to Simmons Stadium. Breeze probably worth a goal or two to the city end, so the toss will be important. And by the way, the coin being tossed today, part of the official Anzac coin collection from the Royal Australian Mint, only available with the Geelong advertiser, the Sunday Herald Sun and other News Corp newspapers from this weekend. A great way to remember and celebrate the Anzac story. With the story on that breeze, let's head straight downstairs and welcome two-time Geelong Premiership star, three-time Premiership star overall, Cam Mooney. Yeah, good day, Thanks, Dwayne. Yeah, beautiful conditions down here at the moment. A little bit of breeze, as you said, going to the city end, but other than that, pretty good. Look, we always talk about the dimensions of this football ground when we come down here, don't we? And you compare them to the likes of the MCG. You see that they're 160 metres long in the G, 141 wide. Simmons, we know it's 10 metres longer, but it's the width, 26 metres in width less. That's where, you go, that's where you don't get stuck out here in the pockets when you play here. This is why you see so much football go up and down the middle of the ground. That's why it's such a great attacking ground. But in saying that, it's why it's such a great defensive ground too. Easy to defend on. This is why it's going to be a cracking game today, boys. Absolutely, Moons. And it's close to a full house. New enhanced capacity here at Simmons Stadium. They've got a few new viewing areas. They've got a new gold class viewing area where you can enjoy the hospitality and have a look at the football in the background, and we are underway at this magnificent arena that is Simmons Stadium. Fife, almost an early possession for him. Buse couldn't break away with it. Johnson can't break away with it. We've got one high. Flicks it wide. Mackey back into the lineup this week. He was a late withdrawal last week. Quad problem, we understand. Hawkins, and Johnson's got the Hawkins yeah. match up at the moment going to be a big one. Three tools forward for the Dockers as well. Zach Clark's gone forward. Harry Taylor picks him up. Uh, Blitzarves is playing on Tabernet and Lonigan's got the job on Matty Pavlich. Walters hobbling a little goes to Daniel Pierce, who was hot last week against his old team Port Adelaide. Long to Hill, crunch. Silwood back with the flight. Brilliant. And bounced up like a cat. Rubber ball kind of stuff. Got the handball. Gave it off Kelly. He flicks it wide. Hawkins... Just out of his reach and keeps it alive. Still over it. Bumped off it. Ball still alive. Short pass to Kelly from Gregson. He looks okay. Yeah, that was a clever kick. Just to buy a bit of time. Just his second game. Gregson, of course, goes to the pocket. Clark. Crashed the pack but couldn't bring it down. And yeah, still 
flocking in here no, at Simmons Stadium. Disappointing to see that. Got to get those gates open, no doubt about that. So uh, we had some disgruntled patrons uh, coming up from the in the lift, didn't we, Chase? <laughs> <laughs> Complaining and carrying on. One gentleman not happy. He'll be very happy, though, if the cats get going here in the next couple of minutes. Not so. if he doesn't get out of that lift. <laughs> if it got stuck, he was in trouble being eaten alive, I can tell you. Jason and I in there, we're both hungry. <laughs> so away we go. The ball has been played in Geelong forward line so far. Bomber Thompson will get your thoughts in a few moments' time as Big Santa Lance gets the first tap up. Good play there by Subin, trying to crash through. Picked up by Kelly around the body. The kick bounces for Childress Lee for Hawkins. He swings on the left. He comes back on the right. It was touched. Good smother. Good run down. Throw in in the left forward pocket. So a good chance here for the Cats to set up again. Well, they've already started better than they played last week, uh, Geelong. They've uh, contested the ball. They're ferocious at it. No surprise, Bomber, to see Guthrie going to five. No, nah, not really. He played, went on Mitchell last week, and uh, so there's no surprise there. Hard contest at the moment. Big pack around it. We get another ball in. Pushes and shoves off the ball. Something he's going to have to get used to every week now, Five. He's going to get so much attention. Uh, virtually rated as one of the best players in the competition now. From the knockdown, that's Reece Stanley wearing the one. He's into the team this week. First game as a cat for Reece Stanley. After career with 58 games I should say with the Saints Johnson short and Tabernet back into the lineup for Fremantle this week as well so call the play on Tabernet not quite sure why but anyway Stokes can get the rebound here he went out of bounds and the umpire now has called it on the ricochet and we'll have a throw in pretty much on centre wing here at Simmons Stadium Rick Kirk alongside Ross Lyon and throw in on centre wing so big Dawson Simpson gets the tap. Selwood at the bottom of the pack as he always is. Second, third, fourth go. He's tackled. He gets it out to Stokes. That was good football, but they set up beautifully there, the Fremantle Dockers. And Pierce takes the mark on the defensive 50. Clancy Pierce hits wide. Sutcliffe. Johnson is cut off by Johnson. Should have marked that one, Jono. Yeah. Both of the Jonos probably should have come better. <laughs> Duncan. Gives it off just in time. As Gregson again uses it well. Lang. Darcy Lang plays onto the pocket. Resting forward Stanley at the moment. It's great to see clever play from a couple of young players. We saw Gregson earlier yeah. kick backwards just to buy a bit of time with possession on that time. On that occasion, it was a lateral kick that found Darcy Lang. And then he just wanted to move it quickly. He didn't try to do anything fancy with the kick. He just popped it into space. He's got a big bloke like Mitch Clark that can run and jump. It's going to be very, very hard to stop him. So Reece Stanley, Stanley, I should say. Massive opportunity for him, wearing Mitch Brown's old number one. But his first ever Brownlow votes last year when he was hot against Fremantle. That may have helped him sneak into this lineup today, but he can't slot it. That was in the St Kilda demolition of Fremantle. It was against all odds last year. But he can't slot it here. Stanley's a nice, handy, tall player who can drift down to the forward line, isn't he? Yes, he is. He's a good athlete. He's a big runner and uh, Geelong seem to like those sorts of blokes. Now, all so. the talk with uh, Chris Scott, though, is he's super keen to use him in the ruck, more mm. so than as a forward. Ibbotson to Pavlich, who marks on centre wing, so running down the ground. Such a superstar Matthew Pavlich. He can't pay that. That was four <laughs> metres. <laughs> no, they're letting it go at the moment. So the lead comes in from Johnson. That was ignored. He goes further up the line. And the mark has been Back taken there by Tabiner, who's been busy early. Been presenting well up the ground, Tabiner. So Matt Tabiner yeah. comes in. Bombs it long into the forward 50. Up goes Fife. He had the elevation. Couldn't quite hold it. Second go from Fife was magnificent. The ball spills out. The shot at goal from Neil is offline completely. And out of bounds on the fall. Here. Steve Johnson back pocket city in Fremantle with a slight breeze and it should get stronger throughout the afternoon Enright crashes it down Ibbotson short Barlow Spur Hill oh, good mm -hmm. movement and well within range with this breeze right behind him coming from the south yeah, we watched some players having warm-up shots down this end of the ground. They were kicking at 55, 60 metres pretty comfortably. Got a good win, though, Jason, at this ground. At the, at the moment, it's, uh, it's going that way. 
Fremantle have got some midfielders, haven't they? Like, Hill's gonna... Like, he already looks damaging. That's a poor kick. They need to use it whilst they've got it. It might strengthen throughout the afternoon, as I said. Early stages, though, opening term. They'll be happy at the moment while the ball's down that end, but they've got a mismatch at the other end because they're lacking a, another tall defender. Sutcliffe has to pick up Reece Stanley. And that's going to be an issue, as we saw before, if the ball's in the air, that he is giving away a massive height advantage. He's giving away about 18 centimetres, Jason. I don't think they're using him well enough at the moment. I'd be trying to get him isolated yep. as much as I could. Corey Enright's kick was a beauty to Smeds. Good tackle there from Ibbotson, breaking the tackle. Stanley gets it across. Kelly couldn't quite get a handle on the ball. The ball flicking around in there. It's nice and tight at the moment. Now a chance for Stokes up on centre wing. Punches it well. He's been busy, Stokes. He was held there without the ball. No, that should have maybe in the back to Hawkins. No, to the umpire. Stokes kept going. Did it beautifully. Flicks it up, but now they're away. Fremantle Dockers come away through Maine. Out to Ballantyne. Listen to him. He made the awful mistake in his career of headbutting Scarlett's hand. That's why they don't like him down here at the Cattery. And Lonigan takes a strong mark. Read it beautifully. Now, need the ball to sit here for Kelly. Good play. They're away. Up the wing. Smets. Looks up. Not much on. He has to carry the ball and give. He does now to his captain in Selwood. Beautiful handball. Opened it right up now. Nice little tunnel ball underground from Duncan. Smiths again. Gets it out. Fumbling play there. Couldn't quite get it. Was Hall and Smith. They need to go in hard to hear the catch. And it's a trip. And the free kick will go to five on the halfback flank position. You mentioned the fumble there, Ed. They fumbled three or four yes. times already, the catch. A little nervous under the pressure, Bomber. Yeah, the young bikes, weren't they, really? Mm. There's Caddy and uh, a few of the younger boys. Daniel Pierce coming off that 28 possession game last week, getting plenty of it early. Neil to spur to Pavlich, lace out. Barlow running, looked a little rusty last week, had an injury over pre season, wasn't quite hitting his targets last week. Bends this around, bouncing ball for Clark and Ballantyne, Harry Taylor. Three Brownlow votes when these two teams met last year, Harry Taylor, so does have great form against Fremantle. Again, they don't want to blast it. They don't want to blaze away to Fremantle's spare man. So working it up. Taylor short. Stanley have an impact. Clark leads forward. It's a wobbler. Mungrel and it's cut off easily by Spur. I just didn't time it into the wind, that kick from Stanley. Now, the race is on. How will it bounce? It bounces nicely for Subin. Looks up, has time. Brings it inside. Gave Walters every opportunity just on the angle. It's a good kick from Subin. But it didn't hit the target on the full. And as a result of that... They've been able to hold it in here. Lock it in, in fact, for a ball up on the half-forward flank for the Cats. So the three are more decisive, aren't they, with their ball movement going forward than Geelong? So Dawson Simpson goes up against Clark. Neither Ruckman really get anything there, and we'll get a second bounce. You talk about their ball movement. They've got great leaders up in the forward line at the moment, Freeman. They've got Pavlich leading up, Tabernard leading up. All of a sudden, we're seeing Hawkins and Clark. They're standing too far back. We saw that last week. They need to get some representation up through that middle of the ground. There's five up there, I reckon, in the end. Picked up by Neil. Does well. Held the ball, picked his target out, and Walters was good enough to take the mark on centre wing. Sandlands up ahead for the long option. Decides to go short to Pierce. Pierce has still got Sandlands, who's run up and... Decides to go out to five. Is it too wide? Yes, it is. He's kicked it out in the full. Didn't allow for the wind, which blows to that pocket. All the and narrow ground, Eddie. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot he was playing on a cigar-shaped ground. And Mackey gets the free kick in the back pocket. And right. A fantastic player for this club. He'll become just the third cat to 300 games. In a few weeks, Ian Nankervis, Sam Newman, of course, the other two. It's out in the fall. Almost out in the fall. The umpire says it was knee, not below the knee, so he gets away with it. I think Geelong defenders are getting taken too far up the ground a bit, Jason. Mm. Sort of getting caught on the way back. It's like they're trying to play very much a man on man mm. setup, aren't they? Yep. Bife. Gang tackle. Kelly. Stolen by Duffield. Sits it up. Pavlich one on one. Lonigan. Pavlich make it a two on one. Harry Taylor drifted across, got off Sandlands and helped out. That's why I like the matchup of Taylor playing on the resting ruck forward because he is the best at reading the play, drifting off and giving assistance in another contest. Guthrie to Duncan. The midfield, he'll cut it off. Turnover. His handball not spectacular either. Stokes, Lang, oh, Selwood, and now it opens up. Hall and Smith. Who does he want inside 50? A mongrel for Clark. Impossible ball. And he was taken down. Oh, 
Oh, play on in front. He gives Fremantle's free. Few arguing with that behind play. Pavlich can't half volley it, but can't make something of it. Johnson's a little spin after that run. Mundy goes wide, and Barlow to set it all up. So Barlow goes short. Sutcliffe marks on half forward. Inside 50 they go. The big leap from behind from Tabana. Didn't quite go, but he's picked it up beautifully. Did well. He wobbles it, wobbles it. And through for one behind. Sometimes, unless you're really adept at that kick, I still think you'd rather see a, a ball sent to the corridor, give your teammates a chance to get on it, put it in a dangerous spot. I know you love it, uh, Jason O, even yep. if they take an extra two steps and get themselves straight and have a kick a drop punt. Oh, look, he had no option there. He's on the yeah. boundary. But, I mean, trying to kick that miracle goal as opposed to getting it back in the corridor and give your teammates a chance and keep the ball in a, in a hot spot. I mean, he's got very little angle to work from there, but he did have time mm. to actually kick the ball back into the corridor. Didn't get great contact anyway with that one, so... It doesn't look like it's a natural skill for him, that no, one. No. So big Sandlands goes up, does it well, just shovels it out. Fife again has been a dominant player. Look at the kick. It is absolutely magnificent. And Chris Mayne will line up from 40 metres out, pretty much directly in front. Slight angle, but if anything, he's got the wind over his right shoulder, blowing from right to left. And he's close enough to be able to just kick inside the right goalpost and put this through. Jase, uh, yep. give us a bit of an insight into the goal kicking here. Well, we know that he was exceptional a couple of seasons ago, but he really dropped off last year, and uh, you'd like to see him getting back to that confidence levels that he had where he just, it was just like shelling peas for him. 150 goals, 74, make that 151 as the Fremantle Dockers kick the first goal of the day. What was amazing is uh, Andrew Mackey's decision. I thought he, he thought that um, did he misread it or was he ball watching? He, he just he was nowhere near him. He, was, he actually ran away from him. Yeah, and Fremantle had the ball. Of course, they were going to kick it to May. I was wondering if he thought he was going to head back for the long kick coming in because he just you're right. There was a, a five or eight meter gap between them. You can see Andrew Mackey heading the other way. I know. Anyway, well they got the first goal, haven't they? Voice of two-time Geelong Premiership coach Mark Bomber Thompson, three-time Premiership player, of course, with the Bombers. With Jason Dunstall and Cameron Mooney. In fact, 12 Premierships in total between our three experts today. Hope you're enjoying the coverage wherever you're watching around the land. Fremantle fans obviously enjoying the fact you're in front. Not a huge difference in the stats early on, other than the inside 50. So Frio just moving the ball quickly, getting it forward. They've had eight inside 50s to the Cats' four. But having said that, the Cats have had a couple of really good opportunities going forward where they just haven't used the ball well enough. Dawson Simpson, third man up, Caddy. And then the tackle, that was almost thrown out. Shit, looks like it. Too high, Fremantle, Clancy Pierce, And he darts that to the runner, Hill, who can get and go. 53 out. Ballantyne lead short. And he wasn't ignored. He was ignored. He went for Walters. Off hands. Clancy Pierce. Jumped on, played for the free, brought it in. And he gets the benefit of the doubt. We'll get a ball up. A couple of big roles for Mitch Duncan to start the season. He played yeah. on Brad Hill last week and did an exceptional job. Now he gets his brother. His brother, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. He's going to cover some miles. So Chris got saying to us, uh, Jason, before the game, battle of defences here. Yep. And so it's been so far. It's been a really good, hard contest. Touch play on. Off hands, looking for somebody to rove it here. And Ballantyne is lurking, lurking, lurking. Goes to Main. Touched again. Another chance. In the pocket, Walters twisting and turning, balking shadows at the moment, gets a little bit of space, and the kick comes in, and it is an absolute beauty. It's a goal, and Hill's got it. Hill on the left boot, kicks the goal. They're always going to get it off that pack. Uh, Bomber, it just looked like they were never going to get the ball out Geelong there. It was falling. They had crummers everywhere. Uh, they had good structure, didn't they? Uh, they uh, had people at the ball in the contest, and people just away from it, and Hill uh, was a fantastic goal. And I think Geelong midfielders and their whole team are a little bit reactive to, to Fremantle at the moment. Um, maybe playing a touch too defensive and uh, trying to stop instead of trying to create. By now from Cameron Mooney shortly what that breeze is actually worth. But it's probably only worth one and they lead by two. Premiership flag of 2007. Another thank you to Mark Bomber Thompson. Here we go. Fluttering that breeze, just a zephyr blowing at the moment. But maybe worth one. They get the clearance. Guthrie dumped after the kick. 
Stokes on the wing. Looks for the pass oh. target. He didn't hit one. He split the middle and got Ibbotson. Clark works hard on the wing and it bounces kindly for him. Not a lot to go to by hand or foot. Had to go backwards. Crab on a ball. Oh, Silvan had back. plenty of it. And now they finally get the one against Silvan. Play on advantage. Kelly sends it long. Oh, it was advantage for everybody bar the leaders. And McFarlane takes the easy mark in defence short to Ibbotson. Well, that was a fair advantage to play because he had plenty of time, uh, James Kelly, but he just misread what was going through the minds of his forwards. So but, Jase, feel... they're, they're not moving at the ball kicker at the moment, Jase. Right. It's, it's yeah. frustrating he to watch. He ran away from it, Moons, wasn't he? Uh, this is, like we said earlier, this is the perfect ground to be a lead-up forward because of the length of the ground. You get so much space through that middle of the ground, and the boys are running away from it at the moment. Yeah, but the way the game's played these days, you get a lot of that. They're always looking for that long kick over the top, leading back towards goal. In fact, they do it far too often. I don't like the ball when it hits the ground in Geelong's forward line either. Yeah. No, they're running it out far too easy. So Hill's having a bit of a day at the moment. So to this man, Maine, who got 20 metres away from anyone there and sets it up with a beautiful spear and kick. Look at that's Maine there, sorry. So the kick came in. It goes uh, forward now from Barlow. Back to Spur, who was the kick in the first place, I think. Now, holding the ball up beautifully. Mundy. Now the kick coming in from Spur. Long bomb up towards full forward position. Up they go. Fife at the fall of the ball. Simpson. Mackey over the top. Look at that play there by Fife. He just wanted it so much more. He went in and reefed the ball out. He's gone through for a rush behind. Still a little fumbly, the Cats, but the big difference, Cats kicking at 60% efficiency and uh, the Dockers are up at 80%. Taylor short in from fullback. Stevie J, not where he'd like to be, you wouldn't think, that pocket. Kicking to Sirwood. It's down. Crowd thought that he should have got a free kick, and Mundy takes it out of play. So, Cameron Mooney downstairs. Well, how do you see it, Moons? Well, you just, we talked about that last kick going in from Kelly, and it was Mitch Clark who's just spending too much time at home, and he and Hawkins at the moment, it's, look, they're trying to work out how each other plays. They're both stay-at-home forwards, we know that, but like I said earlier, on this ground, it's a perfect ground to be a lead-up forward. They need to start getting on their bikes a little bit more. See if they get on their bike here, whether the handball over Cook, Barlow cut it off. Sandlin's hassled off it by Johnson. Dawson Simpson got free. Caddy, a half kick. Little floater. Hall and Smith. Stokes. This looks better. Steve Johnson on the end of it. Can he make something happen? Goes for goal. Keeps it low against the breeze. Oh, just across the face. Yes, well, uh, yeah, Barlow has a history of getting a lot of possessions against Geelong, and uh, so are the rest of the midfielders, actually. Yeah, and that was one from Barlow that's been chopped off. McFarlane's kick was smothered. Here's a chance now for Caddy. Runs inside, gets the handball. He probably should have had the shot from that stage. He had a little bit more open goal than the next player coming through there in Duncan. And again, under pressure, Hill's able to relieve for the Fremantle Dockers. Up towards five, he's the man at the back. Harry Taylor did well, kept the ball in front, did very well, then got the handball going over the top to Blitzards. Now they can build something up as Mackey flicks it into the skipper. Selwood now in the middle of Simmons Stadium, gets it across to Dawson Simpson. He wants to get it off to anybody. Back to Mackey. The crowd are starting to go nuts. They're going nowhere with 50 possessions, and now the turnover comes oh. through. Oh, oh, big Sandlins comes through. He was thrown into the turnbuckle. It was like the old days of World Championship wrestling there. In goes Selwood. Now they go with the Cats, can they? No, on the oh. Argue. He put the big arm up for the fend, Five and the ten. free kick goes to Smits. Gee, Corey Gregson was good before tackling big Aaron Sandlins, who dropped the shoulder into him too. It was a forearm jolt to stick with the wrestling. Now it's Kelly from 55. Big bomb up. Mitch Clark goes and marks it. That's a better kick. Kicked it to the spot. Let the full forward run onto it. I'm so glad to see Harry Taylor put himself in the game this week. He really needed a good game, and they, they, he's been a real rock back there. But that one was a nice kick into Mitch Clark, and uh, it was quite isolated, an even number, and he's taken a nice mark. I saw a bit of emotion from Tom Hawkins after he took the mark, because Hawkins got there and put a block on. It worked beautifully. That's good. Kicked two goals in the first quarter last week in his first outing for the Cats. So Mitch Clark coming in. He's had a very interesting week. We'll talk about that in a few moments as Clark comes in and kicks and kicks a goal. Cats first. That was a good goal for him. 
It was a good goal from, um, from Mitch Clark, good mark, and uh, gee, I'll tell you what, the uh, Fremantle boys have just really cranked it up, haven't they, the midfield, they're starting to hit some bodies, and uh, the Cats are uh, just, oh, I'm, cool. I'm glad they got a goal, but it's not, uh, you'd say Fremantle on top, on top yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a good forearm to the jaw from Mundy, wasn't it? But there's the block from Hawkins. It just keeps Johnson away from him. Disguises it well enough and allows Clark to take the mark. Finished with Clark, but it started with Corey Gregson. Just his second game. He's only 73 kilos, 175 centimetres. And he stood there and took the full weight, 119 kilos and 211 centimetres of Aaron Sandlins. And that made a little statement right there from the second game at Enright. Floats one forward, hard attack, Caddy. Cats are on now. Took him a while, pumps it long. Hawkins, two to beat. McFarlane into the hole, hit brilliantly, and it's almost 50. Clark thought about playing onto advantage. Was an advantage, McFarlane's ball. Trio with the slight breeze for another three and a half minutes to the wing. Sandlins with the reach. And we wanted to play on. Played on. Gee, the umpire's cut him some slack there. Oh, that's a lot. Either you played on or you didn't. He played on, no doubt about it. He was off and running. He was going to steam down the wing. Leave it on. So he's given him some benefit because he's a big man who fumbled. And a good Clark Subin in the middle. Oh, and he played on. Kelly. Smets caught by Hill. Ball hits the deck. Even and they've turned the volume up to 11 right now. There might be a couple of mistakes, but it shows you the intent of the Dockers. They want to move the ball quickly. They want to play on at every opportunity. Sandlands mishit it. Caddy in there, gets offloaded. Big Dawson Simpson gets it going. Stokes over the ball, waiting for the ball. There is Mundy. Spills out the back. So Pierce gets it across the hill. He's had a great day so far. Has a bounce. Nice poise. Great precision. Kicks it up. Nice play again there from Walters. He just saw over the back that uh, Pavlich was running up. Lonigan though. Goes across the ball, or across the goal. It was a beautiful kick marked there by Buse. So Harry Taylor can just wander out to the defensive 50. Looks up, gets the handball going to Mackey. Usually very good with the ball. It'll come back to Harry Taylor, and they hold it up. And Freeman, I've got the players back behind the ball now. Fremantle uh, are a strong side. Geelong wouldn't want to be playing too much of that body, body, body sort of game, would you? Because you think they'd just outwear them. Simpson did well off Unlucky. the foot of uh, Smeds. Just good body work from Ibbotson there on that occasion. Uh, the one-on-one -on -one marking duel with Reece Stanley held his position well. So Mundy goes short. Mark taken by Zach Clark. Long bomb kick up. Looking for Pavlich. Walters at the fall of the ball. Waiting for it. But getting it across. That was great play by Blitzarts. Just read the ball nicely in the air. Todd to move it on. Kick a little wobbly. Made it tough for Lonigan. He's going to have to give it back. And he can play on here if he wants to, Blitzars. Touch you, touch. Touch Paul. So Harry Taylor and Clark go at it. Taylor heard the call. Slick hands. Gives it to Buse. He's having an impact. Wouldn't be a Geelong without a father-son in it. Duncan. Steps a couple. Opens it up. Corridor opens up. Forward line opens up. Guthrie needs to hit a target. Here's Stanley's moment. Strolls in. Runs to 30. Walking to the club. Reece Stanley. Great goal. Probably the best passenger player they've had yeah, today. Yeah, I was going to say, it's very rare. It's the first time they've really moved the ball down the ground with no pressure through the corridor, isn't it? They love to get it back into the middle. They took a couple of risks. It was a little bit iffy, the hand pass from Hawkins, but Duncan was good enough. And then he took them on and he used his speed to open it up. And then you see a couple of really good hand passes that draw in the Docker defenders. First from Duncan to Guthrie and then from Guthrie to Stanley. And he finishes well. Scoreboard says Fremantle by a point, but with the wind blowing to the Fremantle end at the moment, you'd almost say Geelong have the uh, slight advantage just with momentum at the moment. That was a magnificent goal. As Dwayne Russell said about five minutes ago, suddenly the flick switch for the Cats. Can they turn it around in this last minute now? The Fremantle Dockers, as it comes out to Pierce, he goes with a long bomb. Lonigan versus Pavlich has been a fantastic battle already. The handball came out from Ballantyne. It was a no-look handball. It was no good. Now it spills out to Kelly. Cats. Dawson Simpson couldn't hold the mark, needed to. Inside the last minute of the quarter. Ball spills out. Will it cost them? Fife. 
Mundy. Pavlich now, 55 out with the wind right behind him. Oh, he decides to go there. short. Walters is out on the lead, and he'll line up. Well, and Dawson can... Simpson's drop mark might hurt. Yeah, you can pass like that when you're Matty Pavlich because he's got such confidence in his kicking. I think he could have made the distance from 55 out with the wind behind him, but Dawson Simpson just had the iron gloves on, didn't he? <laughs> then he was actually lucky because the, the umpire put the whistle to his mouth because he gave a clip in the head straight after it too. They're not a great athlete, is he? Uh, big Dorsey, just a big lumbering man. So it's a, a game of centimetres at times. Just drops the mark, suddenly Walters. And the momentum swings back Fremantle's way. Can he make them pay? Full toed odds, he can. Right on the siren, and that yes. hurts the Cats. That hurts the Cats. It's a beauty for Fremantle, though. But I reckon... Close enough to even Stevens. We reckon it was a goal in the breeze at least, and that's pretty much the margin. Seven points. Geelong 2 2 14. Fremantle 3 3 21. Two of the heavyweights of the competition living up to the early billing here at Simmons Stadium. Welcome back to Simmons Stadium. And Reece Stanley kicked 40 goals for St Kilda. He was as deliberate as you like running into goal here at the Cattery. He wanted to make the most. And number one kicks his first for his new club down here at Geelong. A wonderful moment for Reece Stanley. And got the Cats back into the game. 2-2-14. A last second goal to Fremantle. Gave them a seven point advantage. 3-3-21. We think with Fremantle kicking with the breeze in that first quarter that uh, he probably had an advantage of one to maybe two goals. But uh, in the end, I think the scoreboard is a pretty good indication of what was happening on the ground itself. We'll be speaking to Ross Lyon in a moment. Cameron Mooney ready to go, ready to pounce. In the meantime, uh, first impressions from Mark Bomber Thompson and Jason Dunstall. Well, I've, uh, I've enjoyed the game. I've enjoyed the physicality of it. And um, they're um, certainly... Greg Mantle's big, big bodies are going to, um, you know, to really test uh, Geelong over the, the day, but um, it's really good to see um, Duncan run through the middle of the ground and create yeah. something, and that's where they're going to miss Motlop. Um, they just don't look that exciting taking the ball forward, Jason. The initial impression was that the Dockers had the better of the first turn, but they didn't really put that pressure on the scoreboard. The Cats are able to kick a couple of goals, get themselves out of any perceived trouble, and I think they'll be confident now kicking with the breeze in this second turn. They just had that quarter to settle after initially it looked like the Dockers were getting control. And some of those individual stats, uh, Gareth Ibbotson has been fantastic at 100% efficiency with his kicking. He's had six uh, kicks, two handballs, so uh, eight uh, disposals for the Fremantle Dockers, along with Barlow and Mundy, the most proficient there. Hills had seven. And looking across, uh, Kelly for the Cats had nine, but uh, his kicking efficiency with seven kicks, only 43%. Uh, the ball was getting butchered going in there, but not necessarily his fault, as we said, the, the forward line not coming up to the ball. Harry Taylor at the other end of the ground with eight disposals at 100%, with Joel Selwood at 100%. And you can see Ross Lyon now heading over to Cameron Mooney, and Cam will pick it up with the coach of Fremantle. Rossi, a fantastic star, really cut the crowd out, but probably laid into that set first quarter, let them back in. Yeah, look, a few disposals there, but we're taking the game on. We'll wear a bit of that, and look, they'll continue to chain it. We backed off our pressure a bit. So, look, it was up and about both teams with what we expected. Spoke about that ball movement. I thought you moved the ball really well. Yeah, we're sort of working hard the corridor of the 45s. We're just going to keep it going. Thanks, Ross. Good enough. Chris Scott moving off. Ross Lyon and Chris Scott actually were teammates for one season. They played together at Brisbane in 1995. Fresh-ish coaches to the game. Rossi played in Brisbane. Hmm. Yeah. Tell you what, you wouldn't want to be trying to pick up a... Loose ground ball with those two coming in. The chance. Yeah. Absolutely. They would have knocked into next month. <laughs> and the Cats should be reasonably happy if they can put their foot down with this breeze. This is the perfect breeze for the home team here at Simmons Stadium. It's blowing straight down the ground. It's actually not a fluky breeze. It's probably worth a strong two. And they'd be disappointed if they can't turn this one goal deficit into something like a two goal lead at half time. If Fremantle can keep this even at half time, I think they'd be content. From the ball up to restart it. Too high. Free kick Guthrie. One of the immediate handball to Steve Johnson. Shut down by Ballantyne. We'll keep an eye on that matchup. We've got 21 cameras on that. Hawkins, it'll push out. And he'll have to give this away. Jace, the, uh, the Cats have opened up with Stanley at full forward. Clark sort of in between full forward and centre half forward. And Hawkins at true centre half forward. Yeah, they're going with the three tools. And it's OK if you're using the ball well and you're controlling the flow of the ball. But they need to get crummers around the feet. They've got to make sure they hit every contest hard. 
They didn't really do that enough in the first term. Mundy bangs it long. Fife down there, edged under it, and Blitzar's content to thump that over the boundary on the Murrable Street wing. Here's the nudge. <laughs> it was a fair nudge, wasn't it? Probably there. He Probably can't argue. argue. <laughs> <laughs> he still argued, of course. <laughs> Fords always argue, don't they? <laughs> nice, nice bench press, that one. So Simpson gets the tap. No, uh, Hill again. Silky gets it out to Ballantyne. Ballantyne's kick inside 50. Pavlich just tracked it beautifully and flicked it over to Clark. That was magnificent to Ballantyne. Over it goes to Five. Five on the left foot has the flying shot at the goal and the superstar puts it right through the middle. Great play for him, Anil. I'm going to tell you, I thought the Ballantyne hand pass was almost excessive. Yeah. But he was lucky it was Nat Fife who just rolls onto his left and kicks it over the shoulder for an amazing goal because Ballantyne was actually running straight at the goals. He had speed. He could have used his speed to break away from the chaser and probably kicked it on his natural foot. Decided to be unselfish, but this finish is it's high quality. You can understand why everyone's raving about this bloke. He's a pretty boy assassin, really, Nathan Fife. He was the hero here last year, round 20 it was. Fremantle won by two points, and he was the reason they got up in that thriller. Guthrie, Enright, feeds it wide. Kelly, he's got Johnson over the top. So it's in the right hands to set it up. He heads to Gregson, of all people, at half forward. Oh, hand, hand in the back. Out. Well, you like consistency from the umpires. That's what we're getting. Short pass, he's on. You. Waited and then waited it up. Back of the pack. Selwood, Duncan, put it in the book. That was really clever again. We've, we've enjoyed the decision making of the young players. Corey Gregson he had a couple of leads. He ignored them. He then kicks it to the open side. And then what I really liked was Mitch Duncan looked like he was going to come in and take the big pack mark. But he thought, no, this ball's likely to come over the back, so I'll stay down. Gets the simple hand pass and runs into an open goal. Good to see him down there when the ball came in yeah. so they can put pressure on and they end up winning the ball uh, and kicking goal from it. So it was fantastic. And Stevie Johnson in play. So a goal there to Duncan, but it was all set up by Selwood who actually made the first block on Fife crashing through at the centre bounce. Got the first to handball away and then at the other end opened up the goal square for Duncan to run in and kick the goal. Well done to the Geelong skipper working right through the corridor. Off hands again. This is going to be an absolute belter out of the centre. Look at that one. Fife, they're clamping down and guess who's on top of him? Number 14, Selwood and Stevie J just coming in as well. The tag team working beautifully. Manny Pavlich has just moved himself into the middle for that, uh, that bounce as well. And Selwood was in again. This time they picked him off. It comes out to Barlow. Barlow's long kick up towards the forward position. Everyone flew. No one stayed down. Pavlich, chip kick out. Walters is clever on the left boot. Lines it up. Had a good look at it. And has just missed. So Lucky behind. let off there. Blitzarv should have held that mark. I think uh, Lonigan was protecting his back and expected him to take the mark, but when it fell down in front, it probably should have got punished. Lonigan back pocket, gets it from Taylor. Barwon River End, wind blowing from the south today. Clark comes up, lead up play, got oh. high, brought it to ground. Mundy tried to fend off, Selwood tackle was good. Gregson's been good. Uses the speed. Oh, oh, he just spent that a little early. Had to go back and try and mop up his mess. Stolen away. Sutcliffe. Long kick from Neil. Pavlik's too strong. Quick turnover. Slick movement. Make your pay. Well, it's not his direct opponent, yeah. is it? But uh, Mackey ended up having to was stuck on him. He should have probably done better, shouldn't he, Jason? You, you make the most of the, the mismatches, don't you? And, and that's what Matty Pavlik's got there. And he had uh, Andrew Mackey running back towards goal. He was the one that propped, read the ball a little bit better. Interesting area. Look, a few teammates going over to Corey Gregson in the middle of the ground. He was taking the game on. You don't mind a young player making mistakes all, like that. No, you don't mind. He's a good little player. And, uh, yep, taking the game on. That's what you want to encourage him to do. Been kicking well this year, Matthew Pavlich. Four straight last week against Port Adelaide. That's your Was kicking part. well. Yep. We don't mind that, Dwayne. <laughs> for the season. I'm commentating today, Bomber. I'm not allowed to go with the wee stuff. So I'll leave that for you this afternoon. That's a big leap for Mitch moves. Clark. 
a knee right into the back of the head of Nat 5-2. Well, the kick was too short, and as a result of that, there was a blind kick and hope for distance. It comes out to Hill. That was from Johnson. Hill from 55. Beautiful kick at the goal, and nothing can stop that, not even Dwayne Russell's commentary. That was a magnificent kick and a goal. And the kick out absolutely put Johnson under enormous pressure, and you can see Chris Scott... That is an unforced error and a turnover that has hurt the Cats. You heard we spoke to Chris Scott pre-game. He said they want to defend better. It's just a few little holes opening up and a few lapses of concentration. See, it's been an interesting battle, uh, Mitch Duncan and Stephen Hill. They're, they're playing on the wing and now he's got two goals, Stephen Hill. Mitch Duncan's got one, so he's, he's got his nose back in front. Tell you what, you don't have to do much wrong before uh, they, they hurt you on the scoreboard, yeah. Fremantle. of superstars on the bench having a rest three of them in fact at the moment Hill Mundy, Main and a sub by the way Matt DeBoer as you saw there he was the sub last week and he's sub again today, five speaking of superstars, the full 360 often that is called ball, Spur got his hands free just in time, Barlow dumped into the deck by Kelly Crowd getting a little restless again Margin 15 points, and that's the biggest margin of the afternoon. Dawson Simpson straight down to Clancy Pierce, who put his head down. Player down behind play. Johnson. Stevie Johnson is down behind play. We'll keep an eye on that. Guthrie, turnover, short pass. Duffield's marked, and Steve Johnson is still down, holding his head. Barlow. Stop it. Stop it. Michael, just wait. Can you play? Yeah, he's just held it up. And he's a, uh, he's a pretty tough lad. He doesn't go down for no reason, Stevie J. No, and he's got a good memory as well, so he often knows who did it. Oh, he's oh, his man. teammate. Friendly, friendly fire. fire. Dawson Simpson, he'll still look at some Fremantle player this afternoon and take it out on him. Oh, tell you what, they're dangerous ones, though, aren't they? Very the dangerous. One. He had the neck compressed there, so it's good to see him up and about. Yeah, he's OK now. Turn over. Stanley already got one. Bumped on the kick. Held his line. He's got two. He's down too. The catch fans will be loving the new recruit, Reece Stanley. Well, he's absolutely. already kicked a couple. One and a half quarters of football, he's kicked two goals and uh, looks OK. Looks good. And Stevie Johnson's OK, I think, so that's all good news too. I didn't think he was such a good kick, Jason. I thought he was a... Yeah, I sprayed him everywhere a bit. Well, but, for uh, whatever reason, I don't think we saw the best of him at St Kilda, but maybe he gets a better opportunity here with uh, less pressure, with better looked, players around him. He looks different in the dropper. So Reece Stanley off to a flyer at his new club with two goals, two good running goals for a big man too. That one in particular is a ripper. You love to see the big man run through centre-half forward and nail it on the run. Big Sandlin's just tipped it off. Coming through hard was Stokes there. Throw, Fremantle. Heard the umpire, might have been a bit tough, but Fremantle will get the free kick. Can, he cannot believe it. Matty Stokes. And I thought he was a bit unlucky. Subin with a high left foot kick up towards Pavlich. Fall of the ball, lurking with intent. The Dockers just waiting for it to come in, and it doesn't. And by it comes okay. into bounce. One day I'd like to see Corey Enright just off the best players from the opposition and just okay. see his creative side, because he's amazingly creative. Simpson did well. Held his spot. Johnson's recovered. Grigson takes the mark. Not much on up ahead. Stanley might have to be his man. Doesn't give him much, but Mitch Clark does. He goes short to Selwood on centre wing. So they have to regroup up forward. So Mitch Clark had a 50-60 metre lead there, Jase. And he was the one they should have used because he was 10 metres clear. Touch play on. Clark uses his body, but it's picked up by Subin again. Gee, I like the way he approaches a Corey Gregson. Here goes Stevie J. Shrugs one, shrugs two, shrugs three, gone. Mundy's in a uh, bit of trouble too, isn't he? Yeah. The little man got him. So Mundy just with the trainers at the moment as the kick comes out from Duffield. Servants having a good afternoon at the office. Influential possessions. Hugs the boundary. Smets let it drop. And another one that could have been held and might end in a turnover. Stays in. So he gets tackled here on the left knee. Just 
lands on it, folds underneath him, but he's up and running. That's the good news. He's a great little tackle, Greg. Yeah, I like him. Ooh. I like him. Stanley into the ruck and Subin, another possession. Touch play on the call. Front spot, Harry Taylor knocks it down. Enright, chance to be creative. Gave it up and out of play. Nine point margin. I said that before, Dwayne, because for years and years he's, a, he's always just played on the uh, the most dangerous play, the Oli and all that. But he's got an, an, an amazing creative side and him to accumulate possessions. Jet views. Mundy. Crack and a little restless at the moment. Again, the volume goes up. Enright again being creative. Not creative enough. Keep watching there. Halfway through the second term, Geelong with a slight breeze and Subin getting some treatment from it's a hard and game. the trainers. It's a hard game out there today. We heard both coaches before the game absolutely keen to get into it. Ballantyne didn't hear the call. Did he get one high? He's in trouble now. He's gone. The umpire, put his, whistle, high, the umpire put his whistle to his mouth. He yeah. was going to pay the high one, and he thought maybe not enough in it. Well, that's either like high or holding the ball. Well, I, I think that's the one where they always you go the that. ball up as the bailout. You screen play on in the air, and then you let him get away with that. He has to be too high or holding the ball. I understand that, but I think sometimes they give the player benefit of the doubt for not having heard the, the touched. They uh, can't break through. That. Can't break through the wall at the moment. That's the Cats, of course. Here we go. Shot on goal. Big Clark. Little chip kick forward is offline. And right off line out of bounds on the foot. So let's have a look at this one. Touched off the boot. And if that's too, that's too high, obviously. Oh, it's a minimal, minimal contact. Yeah. And no prior opportunity. Good decision, I reckon. Good decision. I think your prior opportunity is the umpire screaming, play on touched in your ear. It's not a marking attempt. The player's concentrating on the ball, Dwayne. Fair enough. Duffield. You can fake sincerity, Jason. You've got it made in this game. It's a Monday. <laughs> Do you like these games where they, you haven't got much time to get rid of the ball and the pressure's right up and it's just the side who can uh, can handle it the uh, the longest uh, nah, prevails and uh, yeah, this will give us a good idea of the breeze. Oh, he's not going to have a shot. Short pass oh, for that's some reason. Look at that ring of Geelong players around them all looking at each other. Not good enough, was it? He's drifted up from the back line, Subin. As Dwayne said, he's been a ripper today so far. The thing is that uh, I think there's a lot of Geelong players following certain players. And when this situation arrives, the, uh, the they'll go to their player they're Get accountable for. Your own man. Yeah, 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 and that's not sort of team. Yeah. So that's Nick happened Subin. a few times. Hit two behinds last week against Port. So he's probably due. Starts at left, and it was never right. Another behind, and another let off for the Cats. Five's had seven possessions, mate. He's probably doing a good job on him, is he, uh, Guthrie? He has been. Uh, it's interesting because even when Five's been off, Guthrie stays out there and he rolls yeah. to a couple of other players. So, obviously, he's a really good tank. 11 scoring shots, Fremantle to six Geelong. So, the Cats, you don't need to give them too many opportunities as the ball goes over line out of bounds. So, Fremantle don't want to use up all their luck here. That was a good contest from Hawkins because if that doesn't go out of bounds, it's four against two. They have the numbers at ground level, the Dockers. They've got to get more around the fall of the ball, the Cats. So Pierce is lurking here for the Fremantle Dockers as Clark gets front spot. Dawson pushes him underneath it. Does well. Little flick over the top. Guthrie follows the ball up nicely. Picked up, though, by Neal. Gets it back. Five. One hand. In he goes, tries to just drag it out. Almost like a rugby play there, trying to get the go ball behind the be gone. Now it's gone for the oh. throw. Geez, how good is your boy Gregson been today? Yeah, yeah. loving him, loving him. Don't get away! Don't get away! Kill! Let go! Kill! You're on. Okay. That's the umpire up in the goal square. You can hear say, don't let it go. That is Mitch Clark, who at the moment is 200 metres nearly away. Now, see, I hate that. <laughs> say nothing. And then if something happens, pay a free kick or don't pay a free kick. Well, you can see the ball is basically at centre-half back. That umpire discussion that you could hear was happening in the goal square at the far end. So Geelong through Kelly. Go long up towards centre-half forward. Clark at the back of the pack. Here's Stokes trying to crash through. Stevie J is lurking. Here's Grigson has been fantastic. Can he break? We didn't have the ball. Has to be a free kick. Had to be a free kick. Umpire said play on. Gee, Gregson looks shrewd too, doesn't he? Like he knew that... Uh... Let's have a go at this. How's this not a free? Hasn't got the ball. Hasn't got the ball. 
Uh, oh, no, 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 he, he, he got away with one after it though. Then he yeah. threw Pierce to the ground. It's yeah. a really good contest. Good stuff. Five in a game. Spot fires all over the ground at the moment. You wouldn't expect anything different. This is third versus fourth from last year. Two top quality teams. Been at the top end of the ladder for a long time now, these two. Head to head early this season. And Hill busted outside 50. Mackey positions himself pretty well there. Geelong play on advantage even though Kelly was going backwards. Enright. Well, he blasts it long. He spears it wide. And that could be a free to Hawkins. And the umpire furthest the way played it. That's an interesting one because often it can be a deliberate tactic. Sometimes it's accidental. When two players are leading and the player behind just gets his legs tangled up with the player in front, often the player in front and or the player behind chasing will go to ground. Now, sometimes it's Here's just the replay left here, to play. Mate. You'll just see the, uh, the legs cross over a little bit. Hmm. I'm not sure there was much in it. They don't always pay it. Was there much in that one? Fell into him a bit. Yeah. Some, some defenders were very good at just accidentally, accidentally running over. across the back of your legs. Didn't have a big afternoon against the Hawks last week. Two goals from just five possessions. He did kick well. That's a right. spear. That was never in doubt. Well, he has improved his kicking, hasn't he, Dwayne? And uh, last week he just needed to get more kicks. Uh, <laughs> wasn't a great day for our forwards last week for Geelong, but certainly um, it looks dangerous when the ball's going to him. You can just see the ankle tap there. It's, it's, it's there, but is it deliberate? Is it just in general play? Tell you, forward, you say the defenders are good at sort of accidentally uh, getting them. Some are. But so forwards, mate, they <laughs> falling forward. Oh, come on, Bomber. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, just see there, Steve Johnson's just come off the ground in the hands of the doctors and trainers getting that neck check. Doesn't look too comfortable down here oh. at the moment. No, he's pulling funny faces and all moons. It did look good, did it? It was one of those ones jammed right down on the vertebrae. Yep. And Fife again out of the centre, kicks forward. Inside the forward 30 for the Fremantle Dockers. Good play by Mackey, got the handball out. Can they get it out now? It was a beautiful pick up there by Canny. And they hold it up, 45 metres out directly in front. Is the Stevie yeah. J situation there. Dawson Simpson is a fair bit of it. Don't, uh, don't we take for granted what doctors do on match day? Oh. <laughs> Just deciding on whether there's any yeah, neck yeah. damage. Mundy hacks it out. Pavlich paddles it against Harry Taylor. Ballantyne with the dancing feet. <laughs> out of bounds, and you can hear the uh, Geelong crowd. So Stevie just starting to tighten up there. Come and on, I think it might be a little bit... Worse than we thought, first thought. Let's hope everything's okay for Stevie Johnson. Back into play. Sandlins with the flick behind the ruck contest. Caddy went in on hands and knees. Dawson Simpson tried a slick handball out. Didn't quite work. The Cats have, well, maybe the next Stevie J to come on as their sub. Nakia Cocker, too, is the sub this afternoon. Another excitement machine. Dawson Simpson slaps that toward the boundary. So we're content to help it run out so they can reset. Interesting, Mitch Duncan's been released from the Stephen Hill role. He's uh, he's playing on ball now. Looks like James Kelly's got that responsibility. Kelly was on Pierce, wasn't he, on the other wing? Sandilands with the reach. Used it well. Mundy got his arms free. Walters, Clancy Pierce. Dan Step didn't quite work for him. Danced into trouble. Another gang tackle. Flicked out to Sutcliffe. Barlow. Big pack around it. You throw a blanket around 15 of them there. So Wayne, Stevie Jones, really... Nakai Cocker too, wearing the number five again today. Fair number down here. Yeah. Geelong, number Polly five. Farmer, Gary yeah. Abbott, of course. Barlow yeah. spears that. Pavlitz this direction. Gary Malaki. Going back now, oh. Eddie. Five yeah, breaks oh. through. Speaking of all time, oh, right. What a goal. How good is he? That was great. Well, he hasn't had too many possessions, but he, uh, a couple that he's had have been absolutely sensational. There was none better than that. He took the ball under severe pressure, bodies around, broke the uh, tackle and uh, kicked the goal on the, uh, from what, 40 out, uh, snapped around his body, super goal. He'd be upset, Chris Scott. He spoke about defending better. Well, there's three very ordinary tackles that he just shredded his way through and punished them in the best possible way. So Fife's kicked two for the quarter, and the Cats 
doing well until that moment. A 10-point lead now to the Fremantle Dockers. And this centre bounce has just been fantastic. Selwood and Fife now going head-to-head -head for the ball up. Mitch Clark into the ruck. Up goes Sandlands, and it's Fife who gets it out again. Goes backwards with a handball, missed his target. It was Ibbotson who went over his head, and we'll have a ball up. Let's have a look at the yeah, celebration yeah. from Matty Five. He's enjoying it, isn't he? He's, he's got, giving it a good work over. He's got the Leon, <laughs> Leon Davis fidget going there. <laughs> Kelly goes in, dragged to the ground. Subin over the top of him, and Stevie Johnson's obviously had a good massage. He's back into the fray. That's good news. It looked like it was really tightening up his neck there from that uh, head collision. Sandlins has to go right from seven foot up to down to the bottom of the ground. And Clancy Pierce Eddie at the bottom Mark. of the pack for a ball up. I reckon he would be pretty stiff, mate. He Eddie. just wouldn't be telling doctors exactly what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Jimmy Bartell was all that happy about missing today's game either, speaking to him pre-game. Clancy Pierce floats in. Big piece of it. Couldn't hold it. Duncan with the handball on. Stokes to Clark. Dump as he took possession. Ibbotson. Pavlich in a one-on-one -on -one with Lonigan and won himself a free. That's a good contest these two as well. Yeah, he's a good player, Lonigan, isn't he's he? He's be hard defender. to play against. But Pav's in good form. Mundy spears it wide to Clark, lace out. Tavern is inside 50. Fife's inside 50. Fife's got some space to work into as well. It's in his direction. And it's cut off. No, Duncan let it fly. Fife bends it back. Not enough. He'd almost given up then, Fife, hadn't he? He thought he was just the um, yeah. was just going to mark the ball, but it went over the top, and it would have been nice uh, for him to score from there. Almost impossible to kick a banana with the wind blowing the other way. I've seen Gary Ablett, the junior, do it a few times. <laughs> Said it was almost impossible. <laughs> it wasn't a great option, the kick from Zach Clark, though. He had Tavener deep on Mackey. Going to give you your forwards opportunities, particularly when you see the right matchups. So Buse in the back pocket, Mackey. Nice kick. That was an absolute ripper. Just held his composure. Blitzarms takes the mark. Called play on now. Kicks long down the line. Reese Stanley goes up. Bibbs at a big thump. Hawkins was heading to the square. So that uh, put him out of business in that contest. Clancy P Pierce gets the handball going. She's going to be near the set, but now it turns over for the Cats. Here's a chance. Grigson's been fantastic. Held up in the tackle. Ball up. Gee, you've got to love him, don't you? Like, he got tackled and he, uh, he had every right to just cough the ball up, but he didn't. He held on. He made sure it never got released. So that Fremantle won possession. It was good. So just 18 years of age, second game, originally from Sacred Heart College in South Australia. One of yours, Duano. Played against men for Glenelg in the SNFL last year. I think that helps if you're an 18-year-old, getting some experience against men. Had five great games in the South Australian team in the Junior Carnival as well. Yeah. As Nat Five having a stint forward at the moment. Blitzarves picks him up. Kick was a bit of a blaze away and a clean bowls McFarlane who still gets it anyway. Searches for the boundary and Spur kind of runs it over the line. Rossi, Rossi Lyon would be uh, pretty happy that McFarlane decided to change his mind. Yeah. Interesting shot of the Geelong box and sitting up the back, Stephen Motlock. A good learning experience for him. Today for Probably drinking get a alcohol of, in a public place. Probably get a couple of sprays. Get a couple of sprays during the day, I reckon. <laughs> I guarantee you won't be having a drink. Lang. Hawkins dropped it, played for the free. Johnson played for the free. Didn't get it. Clancy Pierce and Daniel Pierce fighting hard. Five. Dumped in the deck by Lang. Hard, intense contest at the moment. He'll also be able to give good feedback to his teammates, Stevie Motlop, because you hear the coaches, they analyse every contest, and you'll find that a few players cop sprays throughout the course of a game. Yeah. Well, the best thing to do is have too many plays in the box. <laughs> Break their heart, wouldn't you, Bomber? Yeah. Touch play on. They've been red hot on the touch off the boot today, the umpires. And there's been plenty of them because of the intensity. Every time right. there's a loose ball, Jace, they're on it, aren't they? They're tackling well, the Cats. They are now leading the tackles 47 to 28. So there's real intent there. Yeah, well, you could see from Chris Scott's demeanour in our interview before the game that they have really cranked up. They've had the adversity on them not too often in many years, in recent years, the Cats. This week it has been all over them from the loss to Hawthorne and everything else happening off the ground. And they've come to play. So Blitzarms will get the free kick. Dancing, twisting, balking himself. He finally gets it forward. And as a result of that, he has butchered the kick. Well, that, that is very unpredictable. You don't know what he's going to do. And it's hard for his teammates to read him. 
Good hands. Barlow can run. He's got Ballantyne forward, puts it in his direction. Good punch away, Buse. He's really grown as a player, Jed Buse. Takes it to the line, and we'll get a ball in. Yeah, I tell you what, he's doing an excellent job. He's, he's troubling Hayden Ballantyne. Just half a dozen possessions. He hasn't hit the scoreboard yet. He's got good speed and good size to play on those small forwards. He's no rat just yet, but he's growing as a player and establishing himself in this best 18 from the ball in five again this would have been three for the quarter still gives it a run and it runs across the face and another behind but he is wreaking havoc you've got to love the way he moves he's always on the move going through stoppages and everything and if he gets the ball he's dangerous he's dangerous going forward isn't he jace two goals one yeah. and one out of bounds on the full for the quarter so far it was hall and smith on it at that stoppage because guthrie's off having a spell a bit Hill silly from Mitch Dunn. Kick. yeah that was ambitious and Hill has Mitch, it. Mitch, Mitch. Yeah, thank you. He's the last bloke you want to have him with the ball. He kicks it so well. And oh. once again, he just put it right in the spot. And up goes Barlow. Beautiful attack at the ball. Eyes for it. Hands out in front. And he has taken a great mark. He missed round one. He's, he just looks a little off at Andrew Mackey at the moment in, in his defensive stylings. Just some of the spoils, some of the body positioning hasn't quite been right. Yeah, and you've got to get it right in the, in the uh, defensive third of the ground because if you don't, the opposition kicking goals. And there's been a couple, hasn't there, today that he's just probably just been a little bit sort of not strong enough and not been able to stop the opposition from winning the ball. So just this for a game of... high 17 points. Sorry, Jason. Jimmy Bartell looked a little worried down in the race. Barlow comes in and he's, he's hooked that across the face of goals. Through for one point. So a let off for the Cats there again. And they're becoming a little bit profligate here, the Fremantle Dockers. 6 8 44 to 5 2 32. Let's ask. Of course, the punch from behind, Mackey. One of the things we are finding, though, is that you can score at oh. both ends. You can certainly create okay. issues. We don't have to worry too much about the breeze if you play well. Control the footy, you can score. Well, the, 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 end, the, the end the wind's going to is uphill. Yeah. So you've still got downhill against the wind. Very little in that, but just shows the frustrations of Andrew Mackey. Oh. Monday stole it from Hall and Smith. Gives it back to Neil Pavlich. Oh, oh, what a spectacular pair of hands that is. Just love forwards where they just know how to turn their body just a little bit to keep the defender away from uh, the ball. And did Pavlich did so well then. 16th season for the Fremantle superstar. How old is he? 30... 34. 34 this, and he's still doing end this. Of, end of this year. It's fantastic. Yeah. Players are, some players are getting really long careers. Mm. Give him 33 for at least another well, six months. Okay. The 31st of the 12th. I said end of this year. Didn't <laughs> it's, I? 31st yeah, the of the 12th. <laughs> the last day of the year. <laughs> He's still got it though. <laughs> and he doesn't look like losing it in a hurry. Well, what a player, eh? Over the years, he's just been out, out, out and out champion and uh, to still be doing this. That, like, there wasn't much more that uh, Lonigan could have done here. He's uh, he's played everything right. Uh, there he is, coming out of the goal square there. Perfect position with him. But just that little sort of turn of the body. And uh, maybe could have got an arm in, Tommy. But, uh, he's had a great career. So Matthew Pavlich, what a superstar. He kicks his 634th goal for this Fremantle Dockers team. Has been one of the great players of this generation. And at 33 years of age, he does it again and gives the Fremantle Dockers a game-high 18-point lead. They've got to get the next one, the Cats. Selwood gets the high tackle. That one was there. So Selwood, who has tried his heart out for this side, leading from the front, gets it out to Smiths. Smiths' kick up towards Big Mitch Clark. He was held from behind. No, said the umpire. Fall of the ball. Nice play there by Stokes. Just knocked it forward. Diving in on top of the ball. Here's a chance now for Guthrie to get the kick out. And he gets the goal. The Cats desperately need it. That was great hard play. It's a much needed goal for the Cats. They're under pressure at the moment. They're just sort of staying in this contest. But if they don't to make the most of their opportunities, they'll find that that margin just continues to grow because Frio just continue to create opportunities. That's a good snap on the left foot, Guthrie. Uh, yeah, he's a right footer, isn't he? Yeah. yeah and uh, look, his opponents had a kicked a couple of goals this quarter in uh, five, so. It was good that he got one back. Um, uh, he, he does try hard and he's an honest toiler. So um, well done to him. Two minutes 20 left in the half. 
Sandlins, Dawson Simpson. Fife and Selwood side by side for this ball up. Flick down towards Selwood and Fife. Stolen by Holland Smith. Rolls it to half forward. Extra man back now for Fremantle. Did extremely well. Spur collected just out of the reach of Tabernet. And we'll get a ball in. It's those little situations there, I reckon, to, uh, that we can... They could be a little bit better and a bit more creative, I reckon, Fremantle. Um, got the ball coming through the middle. He goes wide out to the wing, and it's just uh, a nothing play. Played finals all three seasons under Ross Lyon. The window well and truly open for Fremantle, especially with Fife on fire. Play on the call. Tabana flicks up the handball. Cavalry arrives for Geelong. Blitzer, it's got it from Lonigan. Bang! High tackle. One fifty left in the half. It's a physical game, isn't it? Mm. Hitting hard, both teams. But a great game of footy. Yes. Has been a ripper so far. So Blitzart, with uh, the clock ticking down to one forty-eight, Cats have done well. That last goal was so important. The big man puts his hands up, and Sandlins gets it on the second grab. So Mundy just lurking behind, looking for the kick. Does it? And out in the four. Well, we say it's a game of centimetres. We like the Geelong almost measure their uh, performance against uh, how many times that the opposition kicked the ball out in the full here because of the narrowness. Yep. So put the squares on them, up they go. Stanley again has been very good today. Fantastic tackle by Caddy. Really put the grip on there. And we'll have a ball up at half forward flank. So 116. Almost like a rugby league game at the moment, just pushing up, getting some yardage, getting some yardage. Trying to open up this last minute and 13 seconds. Vital in the context of the game. The Cats get the break out of the centre. Comes down Enright. He's dragged off the ball. Just got a toe poke on it. There he is, Selwood, the skipper. Look at the handballs of beauty. Harry Taylor had to hold. Five came at him. Superstars everywhere influence this game. It is sensational stuff. Now Guthrie brings it out. Great kick to Gregson who marks on centre wing. Guthrie kept running. He'll get it back. The kick was a little bit underweight, but was good enough to get there in the end. So Guthrie comes in, holding it up, 40 seconds, you can see the countdown clock. Smith, the long bomb, in towards Mitch Clark, free kick. Three man to Luke McFarlane. Gee, I thought it might have been Geelong's there, I was hoping anyway. McFarlane gets the free kick and 30 seconds to go in this quarter. Dying seconds, not the required distance to be paid to Mark. Ibbotson goes back, Johnson. I think they know how long left. They might just mop these seconds off the clock, Fremantle. McFarlane, Duffield. He's got Neil. And Neil can hold it up and take the last 10 off. You can see the signal. Cameron, that's it. We'll take this lead in and be content. 12 points the margin. Pavlich thrown out of it. Up I said play on. So half time, Simmons Stadium. Two of the heavyweight contenders, third and fourth from last year. Amazingly, this is their only clash for the home and away season this year. Only time they'll meet again this year is if it's finals. As you can see, Lottingen got one to the face. But Fremantle got a good record. Recent record here would be reasonably content. We're about to head downstairs and hear from their captain. He's with Cameron Mooney. Uh, just an outstanding game of football at the moment. That second quarter, I feel like you really started taking control of the game, but just wasted your opportunities going forward. Yeah, what are we? 15 shots, that's handy. You know, you're right, I think we should have just some costly mistakes. They're rebounding really well. We know, you know how sick they can be on the outside. I mean, you taught them all about that. So. <laughs> but look, we've been penetrating reasonably well. We just need to take opportunities. And as you said, when they're up and going, just sort of restrict them a bit. Good on you, mate. Thanks for your time. Good luck. Fantastic ever there, Matthew Pavlich. He was in a blue just before the final siren. <laughs> lost his shoe, did it all walking off the ground and kicked a ripping goal from a fantastic mark in that second term. We have got a great game of football on two of the league heavyweights. Fremantle Dockers leading Geelong by 12 points. A fantastic first half of football. A real arm, arm wrestle, but with just some hints of brilliance coming through. Look at this one, Hill snapping on the left foot. That gave Fremantle a 13 point lead after they kicked the first two goals. Look at that, the tall and the short of it there. It was fantastic stuff. Mitch Clark getting on into this and kicking the first goal of the game for the Geelong side. 
into the second term. Fife, one look, one step, one goal. Magnificent stuff. Then Hill, who played beautifully in that first half. Silky skills, putting it right through the middle. 15-point lead at that stage of the Fremantle Dockers. It looked like they might get away, but Reece Stanley kicked his second goal in his first game for the Geelong side to keep the Cats in touch. Then Fife, three players trying to tackle him, crash through and kick the goal. Again, they got out to an 18-point lead with this magnificent mark and goal from Matthew Pavlich. And it looked again like they were about to break free of the Fremantle Dockers until Guthrie, with the left foot snap out of the back, was able to drag another goal back and get it to 12 points at half-time here at Simmons Stadium. 6-2, 38-7-8-50. Geelong leading the Fremantle Dockers. Let's go down to Jason Dunstall and Cameron Mooney on the ground. Thanks, Ed. Just a 12-point margin. Probably could be a little bit more. They've been super impressive, the Doggers, I think, Moons. Look, they really have, and I think Geelong are hanging on by a thread at the moment. We're giving up 15 shots on goal. The inside 50s are really giving up as well at the yep. moment. I think Fremantle is starting to get a little bit of dominance. I know the clearances are the same, but their clearances are just more positive when they get that ball going their way. It's interesting you talk about those inside 50s. This is a genuine concern for me. I mean, there's a few stats there they'd like to improve on, but the one that really hurts is down the bottom. They had this problem last week. They didn't get enough ball forward. You've got some tall timber down there. You've got some potential match winners. You've got to create some opportunities for them. 40-odd inside 50s for a half of footy isn't enough to get the job done. How are you seeing the way Clark and Hawkins in particular and, uh, and also Stanley when he's been down there are operating? Look, they need to work out a system that's going to work for these guys. We know Clark likes to rest forward because he's been playing in the ruck. Now, Stanley comes into the game, he's going to be that ruckman. So Hawkins and Clark need to work out who, who's deep and who's high. Yeah. We're seeing too often now, Geelong, they'd like to handball and run through the, the middle of the arcs there uh, with some really ball, great ball speed. Chip the ball around, all those types of things. But this is the ground that's perfect for lead-up forwards to really undo the game and get the game flowing. They just can't seem to do that at the moment. They just can't find a, seem to find the synergy between the both of them. And I think that's going to take, obviously, a little bit of time. But once it happens, it'll be great. But right now, they both spend too much time deep or they get up too high and there's no one deep. Couldn't agree more. Sometimes the easiest ball for a forward to get is the lead-up mark. So they've got to do a little bit more of that. They're hanging by a thread. We can see the NAB Oz kickers enjoying their time out on the ground as the Cats and the Dockers enjoy a well-earned break. We'll have plenty more from Simmons Stadium in just a moment. some areas of our game that were incredibly frustrating today that we can fix we should fix and we will fix there's probably a bit of uncertainty around us because we're uh, a very different side you know, when, you, when you consider the change in personnel and uh... it's an effort game isn't it we had really good effort in the first half and then our effort you know, capitulated in the second there's picked up and that's you know that's what footy is giving a hundred percent effort when we lost our way there for 10 or 15 minutes in the second quarter our guys didn't panic and that shows a level of maturity from our players yeah, we were outstructured, outclassed in that first that first half, and out hunted. They were they were harder than us. The competition's very Melbourne centric. This is where nine of the 18 teams are. This is where the majority of the media um, are going to report on footy. Unless you win here, I don't think you get rated. To be able to keep it such a talented team like Port Adelaide to 44 points um, on our home ground is uh, not an easy thing to do with. They were fierce tonight at us and um, you know, I thought we were handling a bit of it okay. You know, some of the stuff we were going okay, but when they were, they were there to be won, they cleared a couple that you know, just sat back and said, yeah, that's, that's a pretty polished team playing against you who have been together for a long time and uh, they understand that playing top side you, you have to actually perform. Second quarter was not through effort, I don't think. It was just, it was just horrific the way we used the ball. And most of the basic errors handled too much. I was delighted with our pressure. I thought for a big part of the game we were really strong in terms of putting pressure on, but I thought our backs were fantastic in, uh, with their matchups. Vale Richie Benno, journalist, sportsman, captain, the great man himself. 
And uh, all our hearts and uh, thoughts are with Daphne and everybody who love the work of Richie Benno over the years. And uh, being in a commentary box today, you can't help but doth your cap at one of the greatest commentators of all time. Was he the one of the uh, great cricketer and a great oh, commentator? Oh, he was everything, yeah. Yep. And uh, a wonderful man. Mm. Just fantastic to spend a little bit of time. I was lucky enough to do an Allen Border medal with Richie Benno, the very first one. I got us in and out of breaks and got out of the way, basically, and just let Richie People Benno... He was just uh, had a, an aura and a magic about him. He was a, a wonderful person. People say they have an aura about you too, Ed, in the, in the football. <laughs> just yeah. that, uh, he, you definitely felt his aura when I you were I felt his aura, presence. don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, certainly in the presence of a greater power. <laughs> no doubt about that, uh, Richie Benno. Fantastic man. Hey, uh, guys, uh, let's just talk. We're looking at uh, those highlights there from the weekend. Uh, I've got to ask you, Bomber, because being down here, and Dwayne, this is one for you as a Cats man as well. You can't go for too long at a game down here at the old Cadinia Park without Gary Ablett's name coming up, senior or junior. How do we read the situation with Gary at the moment and what's going on with the Gold Coast? And, and I'll put this to you. Yeah. If you were rattling the tins down here at Geelong at the moment and you thought, gee, Gary Ablett could come up or Dangerfield, which way do we roll? Well, Bomber, would he come home? Well, that wasn't the question. If you had a choice. Well, uh, Gary <laughs> comes... Gary, yeah. most people from Victoria yeah. go to the Gold Coast for holidays. Gary leaves the Gold Coast and comes back to Torquay. He yeah. still loves it here. Yeah. And if things don't go right on the Gold Coast, surely he'd consider it. I reckon it. they'd sell a few more tickets if Gary yeah. was back playing here rather than Dangerfield. Mm. Yeah. Do you reckon? Okay. Mm. Yeah. 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 They might get both. Well, I mean, if, well, Frank Costa is floating his business. There's a billion dollars around. Well, there, if but... Gary knows that Dangerfield's coming back, maybe Gary would be more likely to come oh, back too. Don't get too excited there. You've got to be, <laughs> oh, there is a salary cap. I know I know some clubs don't have is them, it? but certainly Geelong must have one. Can I ask you this, though, They've got a few retiring, though, the Cats. Yeah. That need to. About, <laughs> about 30 of them, I reckon, to get both of those guys in. But uh, seriously, for a moment, Bomber, as, as a coach, and you've, you know, you've been around for a long time, made your debut back in 1983, when a great player comes to the back, the autumn of their career, injuries start to come in and they have to find a new way of playing. Uh, how do you think Gary's going with that at the moment? I think he just feels like he, um, he likes to play when, he's, when his body's 100% right. And I think that... Um, you know, there's a lot of expectation on him to to perform, so uh, that's what he probably wants. And I think it sort of sort of not annoys him, but just gets him a little bit angry when he when his body's not 100 percent right, and you sort of see it in his body language. Okay, so Gary Ablett, like all champions at the back half, is going to have to play with injuries, but today the game is right here, Fremantle and Geelong. It has been an absolute belter so far. Both teams have come out. Both coaches said it's going to be a hard defensive struggle, and that's what it's been to halftime, where Fremantle lead by 12 points. Full house, Simmons Stadium. Little cloud overhead, breeze blowing to the city end, worth a goal or two. Fremantle by two goals. As we're about to start this third term, Fremantle were full of running in a fantastic defeat of Port Adelaide in round one. And if they can get up here, it'll be the perfect opening for their 2015 season. They'd be equal top yep. of the AFL ladder with two wins against two high-quality opponents. And I think that's the key, Dwayne. It's not equal top. When you've knocked off Port and then you've travelled to Geelong's home turf and knocked them off, that has you clearly on top if they can do that. But plenty to play out here in the second half. Big, big job for the Cats to get back into this. Chris Scott, I wonder if he's been able to work some magic at halftime. He wouldn't want to start 0-2. That's what is facing Geelong after a round one loss against the Hawks. Who was the last catch coach to start 0-2? Probably me. <laughs> Mark Bomber-Thompson, two-time premiership coach, in the box with us today. Second half underway. Oh, free kick found Geelong. already. Geelong's free. Oh, It'll come back to Guthrie. I'm back on. Hawkins runs under this, and that leaves Lang to go for it against two taller opponents. And that in itself is completely wrong. Stokes flicks it up. Kelly, flying shot, centering kick, goal square. Clark there, Selwood, off hands. Oh. Post. And that's the tail of their day. Hasn't quite worked for Selwood. It hasn't quite worked for the Cats. It's hard to understand the logic of a long kick going inside 50 when it's Darcy Lang one against two. When you've got Hawkins and Clark down there, either they've got to position themselves better or the kick's got to be better. Blitzarves over the top, couldn't quite hold the mark. And the grip is on, we'll have a ball up. Well, I guess you have to be predictable, don't you, Jason? And yep. that's what we try and breed so that people know where the ball's going to go. And uh, clearly, they didn't have no, no idea. 
uh, Selwood just trotted over and somehow got himself into the play. And there's a bit of wrestle going on behind the play there with Selwood and also I think it's Fife in there who's got the tackle now. But Selwood having a good go in there behind play with Maine. They had uh, a good 30-second wrestle at the back there. I was watching that. I let the play go on, I must admit. I was excited. Yeah. Have a look at that. Into each other there. He doesn't mind getting towards. physical, Joel Selwood. He's got a nasty streak in him. Oh, yeah. oh, you love that. He's a competitor, isn't he, Bomber? Tell us a little bit about him. Oh, I just love him, mate. Right from the first game, he's just put his body right in over the ball and uh, comes from a great family. He's younger with uh, two brothers, and they, I think they used to play in the backyard and he used to beat them up. <laughs> <laughs> so this bloke's been pretty good too. Corey Enright. Big Dawson's marked it, and they haven't forgotten since the first quarter, the Geelong fans, when he dropped the put. And the resulting goal, just to rub insult to injury. Up towards Hawkins. Front spot, Mark taken there, or free kick at least to Ibbotson. Oh! Just a little nudge with the thigh. So Ibbotson just holding. No panic, play on, no 15, so you get a second go at it. It's the 1-2 going with Johnson. This time Ibbotson gets the distance. And the same result right on the chest, and the mark's taken by Chris Main. Main short, Walters his target, Selwood almost gave away the free and could have made him earn it anyway. Selwood with a nick on the eye already, so... I think that's how he rates his performance. He comes <laughs> yeah. out and gets a cut in, the, in yeah. his head at the start of every third quarter. Nearly a game goes by without some blood lost. Not since Norman Gunson has there been a bleeder. <laughs> Caddy short, Hawkins, good pluck. They need more of that. Clark leads, kick was poor, touch play on. Spur. McFarlane went Whoops. for the open oh. side, sat a little. Subin, easy free. Duncan gave him a nudge. Yeah. Wasn't really necessary. You can't complain about that. It was there, wasn't it? Clearly, it was there. Do you get frustrated as coach when things like that happen? But they need to bring this sort of pressure, the Cats. It's been a little bit too easy for the Dockers to move the ball. Johnson, good hands again. Getting frustrated, Tom Hawkins. Ballantyne comes all the way up the half back. Everyone's favourite. Yeah. The booze won't worry him. Nah. In fact, it'll probably spur him on to greater heights. Don't rattle his cage. He's the last person they need to get going right now. They've already got a two-goal lead. 11 points to the margin. Catch two goals away from it. Barlow just got it to Pavlich in time. Little two grabber. Tabiner playing out of the goal square. Walters is long. Goes in the Tabiner direction. He's up. Good spoil blitz off. Down to Caddy. Cats have Stokes free in the midfield. Hasn't seen him yet. If he hits him, lays out. He doesn't. Clancy Pierce gets there. Makes the contest. Ibbotson. Oh, well played. Stokes with two to beat. Knocked it to Lang. To Gregson. And they're out on the overlap. Lonigan dressed forward on Pavlich. Crowd screaming for a free. Don't get it. I think he played for a little. I think you're right. Pavlich around the body. And is that deliberate? No. No. So the defender who went forward actually played and acted like a forward. He, he did. Yeah. He did. He just hops in front and he's very happy to cop the contact and go to ground. Oh, yeah. look at that. He's That's... acting like a forward. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good decision by the umpires, though. And then a beautiful defensive kick from Pavlich. Reversal of roles, beautifully played, and the catch crowd oh. getting into it. Yep, poor opportunity against Sandalands, and they're screaming about time, says the Geelong fans. Well, there's been a couple of efforts, been fantastic. Yeah. The Stokes beat two players, and this uh, taking the ball off uh, Fremantle here. Just uh, that's just what they oh. need to do. Oh wow! They've got the crowd engaged. They just need oh. something to really get them on board. They need to kick a, a goal or two to really put the pressure back on the Dockers. Yep, they've won the first five minutes of this game, of this quarter, certainly. So Lang, at half forward, you can see the picture there, everybody back. The forward 50 is crowded. So up and under, Hawkins from behind, couldn't quite grab it. For the ball, picked up by Caddy. Centering kick, it's a beauty. Oh, beautiful mark. Forward Smith has taken a screamer. That's what they need. Jason they Dunstall did. said they needed something to spark them, to give them something, some value for a return on their investment, and Hawkins was dragged it in. Did you hear the crowd roar when yeah. he took that? He just timed it so well. They just wanted it, didn't they? They needed it, and uh, it's happened. It's a good mark. And it's a good goal, and the Cats are right back in this game. Right, that's what they got, and they finally got it, but 
still a little concerned that they're looking to kick short, short all the time. And that's allowing the Dockers to get so many numbers back. And that's why they're getting very few one-on-ones in the forward 50. But finally, a one-on-one -on -one just evolves out of this. And that's a terrific little Jason. timing of the leap onto Barlow's back. I would like to see Tom Hawkins compete in those ones by yeah, himself, himself like he has for the last 45 years. Yep. They're only going to create those one-on-one -on -one opportunities if they move the ball longer and quicker. Quicker, yep. Neither team's jump with their sub yet. Still De Boer and Nakai Cockatoo to come on for their respective teams. And the ball up. Fife. Try and stop this Geelong yeah. momentum. Gets under that. Enright, can he get there? He had to wait in the end. And Walters just went and got it. Ducked under the tackle attempt. Fix it up. Hill. Spears that. Lays oh, out. on him. Tabernacle. Well, he was just by himself again, wasn't he? Like who? Yeah, Blitz has a... Yeah. Interesting judgment call from Corey Enright. I thought he might almost have been able to get there. Ooh. Decided to let the ball bounce. Even if you don't take the mark, you can half volley it to the boundaries direction. Yep. yep. Well, Geelong had to work so hard for their goal, and they've, within, what, 20 seconds, they've got one back, maybe. Possibly. For the instant reply, he's back into the lineup this week, and he threads it. Well, I don't really care who wins this game, but what I would really like to see is Geelong maintain that pressure and play the sort of footy they did in the first half. Win, lose or draw, because it wasn't a bad standard of footy, but uh, they, the, the real key is for this mob, for uh, Geelong, to be able to do it for a full game of footy against a good team. Been a damaging player, Stephen Hill. 15 possessions, has kicked a couple of goals, delivers it beautifully there. And it was finished off well too, so... So Matt Tabiner has been lively up forward for the Fremantle Dockers. Gets his first goal of the game. His 10th in his career of 14 matches, including today. And Reece Stanley in the ruck for the Geelong side. So they've got an extra in the middle of the ground. The Dockers starting on the wing, and that leaves a loose in defence for the Cats. Mundy trying to get it forward. Could play again by Smith. Dives in on top. Umpire says it's a stalemate. No, he doesn't. He picked out the free kick. Said the Smeds have dragged it in. So Mundy gets the free kick. Gets it out now to Pierce. Pierce steps his opponent, Kelly, then wobbles it forward. Pavlich just tries to tap it down to Walters. Did well. Pavlich will get a second go at it here. Around the body he goes. Kicks it right to the hot spot. The danger zone is on. And Fife read it beautifully. Man. Fife came in with the fly to the ball. It sat up in the breeze. He got his body in the right position and pulled in a beautiful mark. I just can't help but think back to those comments from Chris Scott prior to the, ga the game, well, they've got to defend better. You get a high floating kick inside 50 and you allow a chest mark to be taken. It's great judgment by five, but yeah. it's poor judgment by the Geelong Guthrie, defense. And Blitzarves was oh, the same. Yeah. So five comes in and against the early momentum of Geelong, kicks the goal and they're back out to a 17 point lead. He has his third. Well, he looks like a hippie from the 60s, doesn't he, with that headband? <laughs> huh? An old-fashioned footballer. But, gee, he's footy smart, and he just gets good clearances. And he's uh, aerially, he's very, very good. He can judge the ball, and he's brave, and he's everything that you want in a player. This wasn't probably good enough by Guthrie or... Uh, Blitz what's that? Blitzarves. Blitzarves. Um, yeah, defensively, was it? it was, they should have competed. Someone had to crash the pack and kill the ball. All Australian last year, AFL Players Association MVP, and although ineligible, second in the Brownlow by one vote from Matt Prittis. Best on ground, 31 possessions last week in round one against Port Adelaide. He is one of the hottest players in the comp, Matt Fife. Well, if you stop the game now, he'd have three votes, wouldn't he, in the Brownlow? See Matty Stokes getting up and having a word. I wonder if Clancy just mistook Matty Stokes for the ball when he was pretending to get a handball out. To Ruckman tie up, Lang. And he hit a chest. Hawkins in a one-on-three, really. And still marks it. Man in front. No, yeah. no, no, no. Hawkins. Oh. Yes. oh, that's an interesting decision. Yes. Well, I didn't think he had it, Chase, did I, you? I honestly thought it was going to go the other way. Paul Duffield can't believe it. He's shaking the head. He looked to be the man in front from a technical perspective. Then Hawkins got a big piece of it. But then Duffield came down with it. Oh. Line ball. Mm, play on, I would have thought. What do you reckon, Dwayne? I wouldn't have paid it. No. When you get them, take them. Absolutely. 
They need a break or two. They get a big one there. I know it's only a, a, you know, a lucky body chance, but just him competing by himself there, because he, he just knows well, he can in the end, He yeah. ended up one against two. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I know. But, two, isn't it? but he's still beaten two yeah. players in the past. He's yeah. actually... He did actually got the yeah. first clasp on it. It's just whether he controlled it for long enough or is it a play on call as Eddie suggested. I just like the other big blokes away from him a bit. Sometimes he's, yeah. uh, he's had three or four years by himself down there and that's what he likes best. So on the tight shot there, Hawkins had a lot of it, but it's in slow motion. Yeah. Yeah. I reckon it was a, a play on call, but hey, sometimes it goes your way. And it did for Tommy Hawkins there. So the game still in the balance. Freeman 11 points up. Next goal, so important here. Matthew Pope was blocking the man for you, That hurts when you're about to have a clean clearance and you give away a free kick off the ball. So Pavlis puts himself into the centre, much like what James Hurd used to do in the glory days at Essendon. He did it last week when the game was in the balance, and he's obviously realised, Pav, that the game is to be won now in the next five minutes or so. Hill dancing. Good, uh, good play on the mark there by Hawkins, but Hill gets the kick right up to the full forward zone. Beautiful mark by Harry Taylor. Old-fashioned game of footy, this one today, in many ways. Key defenders, key forwards taking big marks, midfielders going hard at the ball. Oh, Fife! And Fife just pulling one out of the box for the all-time greats today. It is sensational stuff. He gets it again, kicks it right to the dangerous spot, but Mackie gets in the way and takes a mark. Plays on quickly. Cats have lifted their rate. Gregson, just game two. It's given them some life. Little fumble, keeps it in front. Tries to keep it alive. Clancy Pierce beat him off. Gave it to Daniel Pierce to Mundy. Caught by Smets. Didn't really have it, but had enough of it. Gregson to the boundary and will get a ball in. And the fans are involved now too. It's the athleticism of it. It's, it's, it's pretty to watch, isn't it? And he mesmerises those around him. And uh, Spurs got a bit of a sore shoulder here. He's coming off the ground. He got cleaned up in that passage of play. He's uh, staying in the play at the moment. Now he's heading to the bench. But just keep an eye on him, uh, Cam Mooney. He's uh, right shoulder, right collarbone there. You can see the, the wing just dropping down a bit. He he's, caught holding, one. Uh, he's holding it and favouring it as he runs. Yeah. Fife from the ball up. Spectacular to Mundy. And he weaves some magic to Hill. Pokes the pass to Ballantyne. Got it. Tibalo's just come off the bench and he's still all on his own and no one's picked him up. Ballantyne won't give it off, you wouldn't think. <laughs> Put it through from here. You're getting the booze all afternoon. It's been a tough afternoon, just the seven possessions. Hasn't got a goal. As you can see, Spur talking to the doctor. Still yet to use their sub, Matt DeBoer, and Nakaya Cockatoo to come on still. He might have hurt the pec there as much as he's pointing to the muscle on his chest. Ballantyne directly out. Breeze in his back. Booze in his ears, and he loves it. He loves playing against the Cats, doesn't he? The, uh, the little man. He always uh, sparks them up. And... Uh, so we have Spurs injuring his shoulder. Oh, oh. I don't know which one actually does the damage, does it? It might have been the knee. I think he might have corked his pectoral muscle there from having a guess from the cheap seats. It's another great inside 50 from Stephen Hill, though. So they keep answering the Fremantle Dockers. Cats claw hard to get a goal, and then they instantly reply. Valentine's goal makes the difference. 17 points. Ten minutes left in the quarter. So, big Dawson Simpson goes up. Sandlands tapped it nicely, though. Mundy was the man who got first touch on it, but uh, throw, and Mundy will get the free kick. Seem to have the answers at the moment, the Doggers, and, and when they score at their end, it, it looks a little bit easier, a little bit more regulation than it does at Geelong's end. Three goals to two this quarter. Fremantle's way. That was a beautiful kick under pressure from Clancy Pierce. The mark taken by Main, twisting and turning. He's getting within range. Now he goes for the short kick, and it is a beauty to Barlow. Touched off the pressure. boot. The cats are all saying it was touched off the boot. Doesn't matter now. It's Greg, been paid. Yep, I said I didn't see it. 
Well, it's the first one they've missed if it was a miss because they've been red hot, the umpies, on the touch off the boot. Barlow, though, lines up for his 60th goal in AFL football. 91st game of footy. He's kicked 59-47 to this stage in his career. This is a huge kick in the context of the game. From 49 metres, he has put it through for a goal. That's a big goal for Fremantle. Well, over the last six times he's played, though, the Cats, he's been their best player, averaging 24 possessions and normally kicks a goal, and there's his goal there, and he's been a very important player again today. He's just a guy that just he doesn't look that great, but he just turns it out every week and uh, just accumulates the ball, and he's a link player for them. And today he's been no different. He's had, what, 18 possessions and kicked a goal. Dangerous part of the game, isn't it, right now? Spurs back on too, guys, so he seems to be OK after that big collision. I think Bomber, it's about time, and Jace, it's probably about time they get Cockatoo on and show some excitement, get some excitement, get this crowd back into the hey, game. Who would you take off, Moons? I'll come back. Have a think. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the dilemma in the Cats box as well. This is the biggest lead of the game to either team if you've just joined us. And it looks like breaking out further. Ballantyne got one too high, um, and he might be within range. I'm not sure there was much Buse could do there, because Ballantyne turned into him as he sagged at the knees. But you know, even then, they had the spare in defence for the Cats, but it didn't work out. You can clearly see the left arm around the neck. It's like they don't talk to each other on the ground, and when the pressure comes, well, this is the most pressure now in the game. It could really get away from them. This is when you actually got to do it the most. Just stay on task. Big kick. 23 points the margin, gives it plenty of air, but it's way wide. And that's the kind of breeze the Cats will come home with in the final term. Out of play on the full, free kick Geelong. It's one thing to have the breeze, but if you're not getting enough of it, not using it well enough. I mean, we're getting deep into the third term. The Cats have had 26 inside 50. That's not going to get you into a game of football, let alone have any hope of winning it. The Tars takes a beautiful mark. Cats crowd have got to get into this. They've got the cauldron here. It's been uh, all one-way traffic in recent years for Geelong down here, as Jason said in the introduction today. They don't get the, a lot of the, the top clubs down here, if you like, on the ladder. They usually get the, the smaller clubs and have been able to bully them down here at the Cattery. But today is the day for them to stand up and probably their supporters to start to getting some points as well. We'll have a ball up. How good was Ballantyne there, just getting his body in to stop Dawson Simpson yeah. marking what would have been a regulation mark. So big crowd in. Beautiful tap from Sanderlands. Here we go. Ballantyne again getting busy. Barlow just waiting. Now he gets the tap. Comes further back to Pierce. Pierce is a beautiful kick. Look at that one. Just over the head. Good play by Harry Taylor there against Pavlich. It was great play. And it was a bit of old-fashioned football from Enright there. He was looking for the bloke in the third row. You're right, Eddie, about the noise because it, it is a, uh, here's a, what is it? Might have been a throw. Oh, no, it was a good smart tap out, wasn't it? Under pressure. And Barlow there he is, the old footy smart player. The crowd, we do want it to lift out here at Geelong. The Port Adelaide make a real focus of it, and it's hard to play against. And here we're so quiet. Kelly on hands and knees, gives it up just in time, and take it to the boundary. The Cats have got home games as well the next two weeks. So this is the first of a run of three home games in a row. Gold Coast next week, North Melbourne round four. I think the AFL have actually trained the Victorian crowds to be too nice. <laughs> in the last few years. We're not being idiots, but we want them to actually crank the crowd up. Yeah, we sure. do. Yeah, there's a lot of nice people in Geelong, I've got to yeah. say, Eddie. They were never nice at Vic Park, Ed. No, That's but it's, it, we, we need to get them back like that as well, Jason. Pierce, long inside 50, Blitzars. <laughs> quite yes, yesterday. Yeah, yeah, bring Collingwood down here for a rare game if you can, Eddie. Yeah. Blitzars goes across the defensive goal to Mackey. Well, it's uh, the Cats who want to play us at the MCG, okay. mate. Someone's got to pay for these stands. This is where the Doggers have been brilliant. They just keep holding the Cats up. They have to shoot, uh, they have to chip short and laterally. But they just don't get to play on and, and really open the ground up. And Kelly. He's under pressure. Here it opens up. Kelly to Buse. Open forward line ahead. Lang went back, though, not forward to Kelly again. Shorts it wide. Caddy. Hawkins leads up. It's in his direction. Oh, he's tripped again. One. And the umpire calls that one play on. Yeah, that was, he said it was an accidental trip. But it doesn't matter. Yeah. If, if you trip, it doesn't matter if it's an accident or a deliberate. Well, we saw one paid earlier. This yeah. one wasn't paid. He just runs it's, across the back yeah. of his legs. Yeah, he's faked his sincerity well there, Johnson. Oh, mate, that is absolutely a free hey. kick all day. 
One, he was off the ball for the five metres. Then he tripped him, fell on his back. Apart from that, wasn't a free kick. What's he up? going to do this time? Thanks, James. I'll get a ball up. So a big chance here for the Cats. They have to do something. Johnson, who's had that sore neck, is tangled to the ground. He's been quiet. It's affected him, but he's been quiet. Just the 12 possessions for Stevie Johnson. Hasn't kicked a goal. Just, just for uh, Tom Hawkins here, he's got to the front spot. What, how does he play as a full forward from here? How, how would you control that situation at the moment? You've got Clark there pushing him up. What would you be saying as the dominant forward? Well, at the moment... The problems they've got is they're all too close together, plus there's a loose in defence for the Dockers. So you're kicking into crowded numbers. They need to separate. Need to find some space. All right, so Stanley bombs it in. Here's his chance. Tom Hawkins at the back. Can he get it? He does well. He's hustling and bustling. He can't get his hands on the ball. And Fremantle just concede the behind. Uh, Clancy Pierce. They're allowing Ibbotson at the moment to be that spare in defence. Where's he coming off? Well, I, I do, you go and ran, do you go and round him up, Jase? Right, round yeah. him up, Bomber, and then yeah. try and get I him out of there? I think Chris Scott's got to make that decision. He's exactly right. Yeah. Because they're just not scoring freely enough when they do go forward. And how often they gone forward? Not often enough either. Correct. Mm. Yeah. Mark yeah, Thompson, two-time Premiership coach with the Cats, with us today. McFarlane. Yeah, I'm here too, Dwayne. That's right. I'll get to your four Premierships <laughs> and Moons' is three very shortly. <laughs> Monday, floats one wide. Stevie Johnson, can he get there? Bouncing ball. Well, that's, oh. that's just a strange, strange yeah. option. It's deliberate. It's a free kick. I think he knows it too. He, re he didn't really have the option, so he thought he'd play it safe and probably tried to hit it further up the line. And Barlow's yeah. almost within range. He sits it up for Pavlich. Up, rises. Harry Taylor off hand, and he rolls through a defensive behind. Not as much anger from the crowd for that one as there was for Clancy <laughs> Pierce's at the other end. Well, the umpire called it, touched off hands. Again, they can see the short ones, but see, they man up well. So Lonigan kicks in, I think that's the bounce in the full, was it? Yep. Yeah, it was. Well, inside five minutes, as you can see on the screen, and you'd think the Cats are going to get the next goal to have a chance in this last quarter, to give themselves a real chance of having the grandstand finish. Fremantle, well aware of it as well, just taking time off the clock at the moment. When they've done this kick and mark, kick and mark thing, the Geelong have found it really hard to get it off them. They haven't done it too much, but when they have done it, uh, they do it pretty well. So, what is that? Not quite 15. Pierce, a high up and under. Barlow comes in from the side, descent in the end, decides to go front and square. He'll get the ball anyway. He gets it out to Pierce. Pierce lines up. Pierce oh. kicks an absolute belter. It's a good goal by Daniel Pierce. I think in the first half, Kelly was on him and he had no possessions. And I think Kel's gone off him now and moved somewhere else. And I've just noticed in the last, uh, you know, five or ten minutes, he's had a couple of really dangerous possessions. And this is what his strength is, isn't it? That, uh, He's more of an outside player than inside player, but uh, he's a very good finisher. They've tended to get more players in the right positions, the Dockers. They had two of them there. I mean, it was Barlow and Pierce that were just waiting out on the right side of the contest. Swept it away too easily. Slightly underrated as well. He has not missed a game since joining Fremantle, Daniel Pierce. He's got a killer left foot. And I wouldn't have thought he would have been Rossi Lyons type of player, but he has obviously fitted in and uh, Ross likes him. Well, he was worked Freeman. well in his favour. He's, he used to get targeted a lot when he was at Port Adelaide because he was one of their original dangerous players. He doesn't get targeted now because there's too many others ahead of him. Yeah. Good outside finishes are extremely valuable as much as their reputation might have been tarnished in the 80s. High kick inside 50, Fremantle hot. Straight past Clark. Lonigan gets there first. Ballantyne comes Ooh. at him. Pavlich, it's given away. See and they may be giving this game away. It was three pop. There was three players dwaying around um, uh, Tommy. Was it Tommy Lonigan or yeah, Harry? Yeah. yeah. And that's how hungry they were. And, uh, like, obviously there was Geelong players in the area. But that's one of the things they need to do, that support mechanism. You know, he might get tackled. He might drop the ball. But where's his support? Look at the two blokes out the back. Taylor, the young one, Buse and Blickass. So, not good enough. Um, I think that's all we're waiting for, for them to do the, for the whole game, not just parts of it. 
Well, Geelong have finally made that sub down here, guys. Nakoa Cockatoo has come on. It's Dawson Simpson is the man bomber that's come off, and we thought that we thought that might have been the option with Clark and Reece Stanley also yeah. complaining ruck. From the seven and a half minute mark of this third quarter, Fremantle Dockers have kicked six of the seven goals scored in that time. They're out to a game high 35 points. Cats must get the next goal to have any chance. Here he is, Cockatoo, straight onto the ground. He's turned it over. Five, who got the last centre break to set up that goal for Fremantle, gets it off. Good tackle from Cockatoo. He's made an impact and got the Cats fans off their chairs. Up it goes, the big man fly. Oh, a big crash. Stevie, Yellow boots there from Mundy gets the ball out. Umpires pick the free kick. Looks like it's five and Stevie Johnson is as sore as you yeah. like. <laughs> it was brave, wasn't it? Considering he's got a sore neck. Yep. Well, you wonder, you hope everything's going to be all right for Stevie, whether they've gone early or picked the wrong bloke, maybe. They just need to have the magic. Dawson uh, comes off. Dawson Simpson in the sub. And we know Stevie is sore out there at the moment. Again, Fremantle go around the perimeter. Duffield, Hill, all these guys just beautiful kicks, so the ball doesn't even look like hitting the ground. Johnson holds it up. They know they've got a match-winning lead here, 35 points. Love to get another one, but just as important, don't concede one, and they might get it too. Here they go, Walters is 55 out, gets it out to Hill. Little kick forward is magnificent. And Barlow will line up from 30 metres out yeah. on a 45-degree yeah. angle and could nearly ice this game with two minutes left in the third quarter. Eddie, they've had 30 more possessions, Jason, yeah. uh, this quarter, this, this quarter. quarter. But so. if you look at all the numbers, they've had twice as many inside 50s. They're dominating contested possessions. They're winning the clearances. Yeah. It, it's, it's becoming a very one-sided contest the longer the match goes. So, you know, if you're, if, if you're the coach or you're playing out the ground, what would you want to do, like, if Geelong? What do they need to do? Because this is, uh, they can't let this be part of who they are. So Michael Barlow, as Fremantle, are just steamrolling the Cats in the last 10 minutes of play, and Barlow doesn't miss. He comes in and kicks, and it is now out to 41 points. See, yeah. frustration starting to spill over. Bit of wrestling and punching, jumper punching. Oh, Ooh, that's... unlucky not to get a high contact free kick there. Pretty brave kid, isn't he, yeah. Stevie? And, uh, gee, at, uh, the last 10 minutes of play has been awesome, hasn't it, for Fremantle? What would you do? What, what, do, what do the Cats need to do? Well, they can't have... Every, that... every time the game opens up, they're in trouble. I, I think they've got to close it down and turn it back into a one-on-one -on -one scrap and get a bit more physical. Barlow having a rest. And the Cats in a deep hole, 41 points. From the restart. The breeze has picked up a little in the last 10 minutes, so there might be one saving grace for the Cats. Walters backtracks, and there's another player down in the middle. This time it's Clark. Offhand, Selwood dumped on the kick attempt. Trainers out with Clark at the moment. And the ball inside 50 will get a ball up. He, and he is split. He's blood. Yep. He's split. Let's have a look at the replay here. Head clash. Oh. It's a head clash with Joel Selwood. Oh. Well, the Cats have been building each other up today. Simpson got... Uh, and knocked him out, maybe. Johnson, <laughs> Johnson early. A little bit happening off the ball as well push. between some of the players. Look, we talk about what can you possibly do in these situations, Byron. Yeah. It doesn't matter what strategies you put in place. If you can't get your hands on the pill to start with, right. you're powerless. Yep. I'd put lots of numbers around the ball, and I'd, uh, I'd make sure your back half of the ground was uh, looked after. And uh, when, it, when you're in the area where the ball is, you just expect each other uh, just to go after as hard as you can. Mm. Selwood and Clark not on the same page with that attack. I'm not sure they were on the same page with what happened against Hawthorne last week during the week. A bit of press on that. Blew into something that probably wasn't anything at all. Blitz off. Back to Selwood. Guthrie. And again, everything under pressure. Over the head of Blitz off. Clancy Pierce. Spur. Hill. Good attack from Stanley, stole it from Subin, gave it to Smets. Little one-two with Lang. Now Mackey to set it up. Can he find a chest? Sits it up in hope. Hawkins with a couple to beat. Up, good fist McFarlane. Pass Duncan. Down to 45 seconds. Steve Johnson to weave some magic. Back to Duncan. Tucked into the pocket. Overcooked the handball. Kelly, a roller into the post. Ball in. One last roll of the dice for the Cats. 
in their forward line to win this term. Well, the Cats have had more handballs and kicks this quarter, and they've had a few loopy ones, and they've had a lot of handballs to people who are stationary, which makes them uh, pretty much ineffective. Throw in, Sandlins gets the tap. And Guthrie gets buried into the ground. Guys, the other thing to remember is this is not the 2011 Premiership side of Geelong anymore. They're in a, a, a medium rebuild stage at the moment. So, you know, this, this a, Fremantle side... a good team, too. They're playing a great side. That was the point I was going to make, yeah, Bomber, is that this is a team playing for a Premiership, the Fremantle Dockers, and the Cats are probably one notch down. 16 seconds to go. Ball up. Not sure if the Cats are prepared to accept that, though, no. yet. Yet, Ed, they, they tend to always believe they're good enough to compete for the Premiership, and in the last uh, eight to ten years, they inevitably have been. Yep. So, Johnson. In the back, Fremantle. And we're seeing a lot of this now, this, this frustrated free kicks being given away because of the, the feeling of being powerless to stop the Doggers doing what they're doing. They've had a lot of good players, the uh, Doggers, haven't they, though? So all the good players have played well. I kept fans are booing. I think that last free kick is what they're on about. But uh, it has been an exemplary performance by the Fremantle Dockers. Early on, they were a bit wasteful in front of the goal, but that quarter, they were absolutely magnificent. Kicking with the wind, they are 14-9-93. 41 points ahead of Geelong, 8-4-52. Rare highlights for Geelong. Most of the highlights of Fremantle in that third term. They went from 12 point leaders at half time to 41 point leaders at three quarter time. They've played finals in all three seasons so far under Ross Lyon, second in 2013, and they are hot to start 2015. 8 4 52 to 14 9 93. Cameron Mooney downstairs. Well, Dwayne, the good news for Geelong is that Mitch Clark is has come back out. Sorry, with that head clash. So he's out back out to try and stop this man, Nat Fife. He's had an unbelievable game so far. He's racked up the 24 possessions, as we know already. But it's just his skill all, all around the ball. He's second, third. I just love the way he goes back at the ball. Gets that ball. His clearance work, incredible with Sanderlands today. He's had five of those as well. And we just see here he's finishing on the left, mind you. Running away from goal. He's kicked three of those. This is probably the goal of the day just sensational to break through three tackles and then to finish off and then again Jace you spoke about this the high ball coming in really poor defense from Geelong but he just stands under it he's so brave he's so brilliant up above his head as well he's easily just about one of the best footballers in the competition at the moment and going on today he just might well be we have to re-establish your reputation at the start of every new season I think Fremantle fast establishing there yep. we're just worried about Geelong's right now yeah we might be but I think we also need to take a close look at the Dockers and see are there weaknesses in the lineup? I'm not seeing too many. We thought perhaps there wasn't enough assistance, particularly from an aerial perspective, up forward for Pavlich, but when you have the ability to throw the players like five forward, like five forward yeah. they can almost have the impact of a key forward the way he marks the ball. Plus they're controlling and running the ball through the middle of the ground so they're using it better and identifying better options going oh, forward. They're controlling this whole game aren't yeah. they? They're just setting the tone for the speed of the ball and the, uh, the scoreboard to the opposition they're allowing. So they've had a fantastic quarter. They've had uh, 31 entries Geelong. Fremantle had 45, so they've beaten them by five every quarter. They don't have a lot of weaknesses, the, uh, the Fremantle make up, do they? The midfield has just taken control of that quarter. I love Barlow's quarter as well. Yep. Two goals and 100% efficiency with disposal, with nine disposals for the quarter. What an effort. Stanley goes up, but it's Big Sanderlands who got the tap. As always, this man, Selwood, fighting hard and leading from the front for Geelong. Good little edge underneath it. Umpire said, yep, well done. And the mark's been taken by Duffield who has been very good this afternoon. It's just subtle use of the body, wasn't it, from Duffield? Yeah, just a nice little edge under. And uh, the mark has been taken by Mundy, another of these big midfielders. 30-second disposal coming up for David Mundy. He has been very, very good today as well. So Mundy bombs it up. It's always handy when you've got a seven-footer to kick it to, and it's stumped away from Santa Lance. We'll have a throw-in on centre wing, pretty much. What you've got to admire about um, Ross's team is they have a lot of players in his team that are real team men. But they sort of just undercover and they just get about and do their job. Um, and it's, it's a real quality to have. Interesting. Uh, Cocker, too, is uh, following this man Hill at the moment. The ball spilled out because Fife was just magnificent at the contest. But the kick was wayward. And Harry Taylor's got it at halfback. Poor handball. And that's been the tail. Geelong's 
possessions, haven't hit targets. Fremantle, for most of the afternoon, have been spot on. They're a class act, Fremantle, well, and they've reconfirmed it today. When I used to coach Harry, one of the things he's always done in his career is he wanted to take a mark and slow to move it on. Mm -hmm. And I just said, you know, I just demanded that he actually just got rid of the ball a lot quicker, and he's done, doing it again now. Selwood Long, Stevie J stands under it. Tries to the one-hander. Everton at the back. Johnson. Little duck and weave. Got the support. Spur. Outruns Stevie J with ease. Hands to Ibbotson. Fife about to jump. Well, he went to the front spot. Oh, he just good. mesmerised Blitzars there. He faked him into going into a poor position and then read it too well. Fancy being able to outmark blokes of that size. Hill to Barlow. Can he complete the deal? Runs onto it. Gets the shepherd, hands it over the top to Pavlic. Oh. The only thing they've messed up today. He could have kicked it himself. He tried to be too unselfish. Have a look at this here. This I mean, to be able to outmark a bloke the size of Blitzhaus, oh. who can confidently play in the ruck. The thing that worried me about Barlow pushing forward there was he was running away from two or three Geelong players that were half pace chasing, just about done. So this time, Harry Taylor put the boot into the ball. Every time they've tried to play on Geelong, though, what's been great about Fremantle, they've yeah. just got a hand on them, just drag them back, no clear play, and now the turnover's complete. And Fife runs in and kicks it, and that is another inside 50 mark. The midfielder's getting down, and going back to take the kick now, Chris Mayne. We'll have to kick into the breeze, which has dropped a bit. It must be fair to say it's a, he's kicking a little bit, so he'll yeah. kick from 50, so... Is Seasonally that adjusted to 53 metre kick. Was it he had the kick there that uh, the other year? Yeah. That, um, From out here a little yeah. bit, yeah. It's about the same distance, but maybe a little bit more in the corridor than what he was. Yep. And he's kicking right into the breeze, but it's uh, no hurricane by any stretch, so he could get the distance here. Early signs aren't, uh, aren't great for the Cats, are they? Like, so May coming in continue. right on 50 and has kicked right through the ball. Just missed. Missed again. It's okay to say the Cats are a little bit off Fremantle's class, but they finished above Fremantle last year, Geelong, both at the end of the home and away season and after the finals. They would have expected a lot better than this, Geelong. Selwood tries to burst it out of the area, made it somebody else's problem. Sandlins gets there, Gregson, good attack, just kicked off the deck by Stanley, and it rolls toward the boundary and rolls kindly for McFarlane. Maybe unkindly, might have rather it went out to Johnson, but they've got the numbers, Spur... To the midfield to Subin. Can he get there? Can he? So there's the turnover. Could this be a slight change in momentum? Yeah, a look. miss at one end and a goal at the other. Could be a two-goal turnaround. It's a funny game, isn't it? Like it? I just encourage players just to take the easy option. He had an easy one there, went for the harder one. Didn't work. Josh Caddy to silence at Simmons Stadium. They haven't had a lot to roar about this half. And they still have it. Well, the ball got stuck in his hand then, didn't it? He used to wear that paste on the hands. What was that called? Oh, oh the, the grip. The grip. Yeah, yeah, grip. <laughs> used to hate that oh, stuff. I never used the grip. Let go of the ball. <laughs> it looked like it stuck in his hand on the ball uh, drop, but anyway. Oh, did you see the boundary umpire? He put his whistle to the mouth, was about to go out in the full, and then changed his mind. But he was in perfect position. Yeah, well done, no home to hometown decisions. So Ibbotson, who's been a very good player, kicks up the line, and Freeman are just looking to slow this game down to run some time of the clock. Let's have a look at the boundary umpire. Well, yeah. as our great friend Dennis Committee would say, centimetre perfect for that one. Very Loaded. rarely get scrutinised, do they? Boundary umpires and dropped for their form. <laughs> Handball over the top. Nice play until that moment, and look who gets it again. Fife is in everything. To Selwood, crashing through. That's the way you play football. Great stuff from both those players today. It's been wonderful to watch it. Fife again, flicks it out. Great stuff to Ibbotson. Ibbotson's kick is a beauty. Under pressure, just found his teammate, Main. So Main looks up and sees Pavlich at full stretch and takes the mark on centre wing. You love those people who can mark the ball running flat out, don't you? with a defender right on him. Dwayne, Has done it all his life. Dwayne, I reckon, you, I reckon you're a little bit uh, hard on the Catters uh, today. I know they might have finished above, but I thought they have uh, been 
very much in a rebuild over the last 12 months oh. as Harry Taylor gets Locked cleaned in. up. He's out here, Harry. I haven't read rebuild in the Geelong papers, Eddie. No, haven't no, read but, that one just but, yet. But you won't. But I think they've been surreptitiously doing it and defying gravity at the same time, which shows what a great team they are. Yeah, Hawthorne's defying it pretty well at the moment as well. I'm not sure you have to go down to go up again, but that's a philosophical argument we can take up at another time. Tabiner shoots the handball off. Barlow back to Tabiner. Centering kick. Clark's down there. Can he go up? Blitzers. So Harry Taylor hasn't done that. Is he up? No, he's just getting up now, so he doesn't know where he is. So are you suggesting they are in the rebuild, Eddie? You've heard that? Oh, no, I just think that, uh, you know, you've been up for a long time. Let's have a look at Valentine. Is that, is that reportable? Yeah, well, they'll have a look at it. I don't know. I can't pick him. Yeah. Not missed the finals for eight years. Who's that? Cats. 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 Yeah. That's right. They've been such a great side. McFarlane sits it up. Paul and Smith stands under it. Had a big piece of it, not paid it. Still gets it. Hawkins within range. Took a little too much time. And the ball to the wrong side of Clark, and McFarlane takes the mark. Quality of kicks inside 50 has been poor for the Cats. Yep. Haven't had a top five pick for 20 years, the Cats. So Stephen Wills has done a pretty good job in keeping them up there. Tenth pick, which Nakai Cockatoo was their highest pick for nine years. Yeah, and they don't have, a, don't have an academy or a zone, and they don't have collar and other things. So they've done very, very well. The Cats have been magnificent what they've done. I don't, I'm not saying they're not going to be up there contending by any stretch, Dwayne, but, you know, they're, they're building up. Have a look at this, though. This team is in absolute premiership contention. Look at the kick from Subin. It was magnificent. Barlow can just trot into the open goal on the left foot. Made it a little bit harder than it needed to be, but just showed his absolute class and kicks another goal. Well, he's having a feast today, isn't he? He's kicked three goals, I think, isn't he? Yes. Um... Yeah, they're just uh, playing and doing what they want at the moment, aren't they, Frio? And um, Barlow's such a good decision-maker because he's probably not blessed with pace. His uh, decision-making has been elite and just knows when to run forward hard and get on the end of it. So, had a pretty good game, Barlow. Looks okay, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it just slid through off the shoulder. Yeah. Six goals in a row. <laughs> Hill jets out of the middle. Walters about to peel onto it, sizes it up, kicks around the body, and just across the face. Domination at the moment. Fremantle, obviously, in the firing line again for 2015. Magnificent, especially late against Port Adelaide last week. And right on target here again this week. Clark comes up, can't take the mark. Stokes half held, Daniel Pierce on his scything left. Misses the target this time. Selwood to Duncan. Ouch. Floated the handball, yeah. put Smeds under immense pressure. Lang, handball smothered. A little push to the back, and Neil. No free. We'll get a ball up. So the guys use their sub. Guys, De Boer is on. He just saw him there. De Boer is on. Matt Tabernar is the one that's come off. And he's had a good day at the office, Matt Tabernar. So Stokes gets the ball out for the Cats. Good play, Tommy Hawkins. That's right what they haven't, they the haven't had that at all today, Jace, have they? No. no. Out to Stevie J. Will uh, enjoy his hot shower tonight. Hey, but look how quickly the, the Dockers players are getting back, more so than the Cats are pushing forward. Just getting superior numbers down back. So, Joe, pretty much when Stevie J took that mark, he was the last player. Pushing it back. What's he done? And by the time he took the kick, half the, half, just about oh, everyone was in the defensive oh, Let's have a look at this. Tom Hawkins. Oh, he just landed heavily, did he? No, I think he did it before he hit the ground. Oh, maybe he's all right. Pushing it back again. Oh, maybe he got bump, banged his knee on someone, didn't he? He might have got a, a stop in the knee on the way through there. Kick forward again, and this man Duffield has been fantastic today. You spoke about the way they push back, though, guys. It's, it's this ground. They, it's so easy to defend on this ground because you don't have that width. You can just go straight back, and you've got the centre covered, and that's what they've done so brilliantly today. 
it's a game. It's a ground for goal kickers' moves. It's a forwards set up for forwards. It's good for everybody if you can get it right. <laughs> Oh, there's a knee oh. too. And Clark holding his knee, the one that's strapped. So we'll keep an eye on that because that would be horrendous oh. news. Clark holding his strapped knee. Knee problems all last year. He did struggle his way to 21 games last year, but that troubled him all the season. De Boer, the half forward. Enright stands under him. Mackie the crumb. Lonigan. Johnson. Fife lurking, feeds it wide and well played. Stole it from him in the end, Gregson. Short pass, punched away from Stanley. Daniel Pierce and Clough. And Stanley's now hurt. He's getting up slowly. Sutcliffe bangs it back towards Hill at half forward, and they are full of runs still, Fremantle. Oh. They have more numbers. Ballantyne, well, they are working pretty hard. Ballantyne will line up. I think they work incredibly hard, Wayne. And maybe a few people have underestimated how many good teams there are in the competition. It's it's funny the knee-jerk reactions to one week of the season because one week in, everyone's saying it's a one-horse race. There's a few other teams around that are going to have a bit to say. We don't know how good Adelaide are yet, but I'll tell you what, we've seen in the first couple of weeks how good Frio are. And Frio's next two games are at home. Derby next week, and then the Swans. So a couple of big weeks coming for Fremantle as well. Ballantyne to the square, stays in play. Walters tried with the soccer kick, and it's rust. Well, I think they've, uh, they've, they had an extra running session over summer. They've just changed their program up. Yeah, they trained on Saturdays. Yeah. Extra 40% over summer, Ross Lyon says, in their fitness regime. And there's Clark going down. Yeah, he just charted on the way down and then got a knee yeah, in it on the, on the way it. through. Yeah. yeah. Let's hope everything's OK. Johnson. Five. Again, beautiful touch. Oh. Yeah. Well, the good thing about this is if it's down... Oh, reported for striking. striking. I was going to say, even if it's a downfield free kick, it only goes three metres forward. <laughs> and downfield, so it goes forward those two or three metres. And Money will get the ball. Yeah, he loses his kick, does he? He does. <laughs> it's a penalty, isn't it? Oh. Uh, slightly officious. Over-officious. Anyway... Mundy, who has just been magnificent today from 55, he sets it up. One for the big man, and the biggest man in the competition was there. Ballantyne, front and square, left foot snap at the goal! Oh. Is just offline. That's Certainly difficult to pull it back too far from there. He's had a better. Yeah. So here's the report, report here. here. So Smets is reported for striking. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, well they've good. in theory got Modlop and Bartel to come back next week. <laughs> They're going to need them. Yeah. They won't be there, I don't think. Well, they were their two highest possession winners against Hawthorne last week, and they're not playing this week, so a couple of big holes there. Ballantyne had an early celebration there. It was, in his mind, it was a goal off the boot. Everything's gone right for them. Duncan to half forward, and there's Daniel Pierce again. He just keeps on keeping on, unobtrusive. Oh, look, at this. look how easy, though, they can turn it around. Sandlins. Well, up. Cats have pushed numbers back, which means Fremantle can just kick it around here. There's no need to blaze it to Geelong's extra man. Back towards Johnson from Clancy Pierce. He's got Sutcliffe wide if he wants him. He's feeding into that hole. De Boer, fresh man on. The ball knocked out of play and we'll get a ball in. Is there any news on um, Clark, mate? Boons? No, look, he's just seeing there on his left knee, having it heavily iced. But yeah. uh, look, they're going to have to go in for scans on that one. As we know, he's got a bad history with that left knee. Yep, we'll get uh, the full details after the game. And a beautiful tackle. Umpire says no prior opportunity. So we'll have a ball up. So the margin is 51 points, and it's important for Geelong to really fight this last eight minutes out. Try and win the last eight minutes. Get a couple of goals on the board. Kelly keeps on going. It's one thing to lose games, Ed, but you don't want to have a couple of blowouts in a row because all of a sudden the mystique surrounding Geelong and how strong and courageous and good they are at defending their patch and, uh, and scrapping their way through games, all of a sudden that starts to be eroded and uh, the other teams will be queuing up to take them on. Yeah, they've had a couple of years where they've been smashed by the Cats and they'd look for any opportunity, wouldn't they, to get some back. So from the handball, Subin gets his kick smothered, has another go, spikes it in volleyball style. 
Fife versus two. Up he goes and it's punched away. And great play there by Corey Enright. What a professional he's been over his magnificent career, as Dwayne said, at 290th game today. Will become the third cat, fingers crossed, to get to the 300 games, along with Ian Ann Curvis and my old mate John Sammy Newman. What a star those two players were for Geelong over a long period of time. And one of the greatest of the hoops. Selwood gets a free kick, and the crowd get to their feet and say, about time. The umpires haven't been noticed today. They haven't been too bad, have they? No, they've been pretty good, you've got to say. Yeah. Brett Rosebury, Robert Findlay, and Ryan done a good job. Hawkins. You know what they're like down here, Bowen. <laughs> What's that? You know what the support's like down here. <laughs> so they need to at least get this scoreboard looking a little more attractive before the end of this game, the Cats. Regardless of the opposition, they don't expect anybody to kick six in a row against them to finish a game here. Fremantle have kicked eight of the last nine, and the Cats are coming home with a breeze. So this is the last thing the local fans expect. Hawkins... Gets you, under that. You see how far back he leant when he oh. kicked the ball. Yeah. Often leads to a high right ball from a right footer. Well, they only kicked eight goals last week against the Hawks. I know the Hawks are a very good side, but Fremantle are a good side too. But you'd want to kick more than eight goals in a game of footy if you're going to play finals. So they've been great for the Cats as they've got the Gold Coast here next week and then North Melbourne. So We've got uh, David Mundy up to 38 possessions. And that Fife's had 33. They've got seven players with 20 possessions or more for the Cats, only the two. And that's Selwood with 27 and Kelly with 21. No easy games in this competition, though, Dwayne. Gold Coast will be nice and uh, No, but uh, on, on the measuring stick, I'd say Hawthorne <laughs> and Fremantle are slightly above what about Gold Coast and <laughs> North Melbourne. Well, Sydney aren't far away, I don't think, Dwayne, after no, that's true. yesterday's last night's nice performance. The Cats could be 2-2 two and two and all of a sudden their season's back on track. Totally, absolutely. There's not, no one's saying the season's out. But well, Geelong and Port Adelaide haven't won a game, have they? Yeah. Wouldn't have expected that. Port Adelaide to be uh, zip two. See, they're running the Cats off their legs here. Inside 50, it goes again. Good play by Stevie J. Stokes. Now he's going to look up and see nothing but purple jumpers. And right. Finally comes out to Hall and Smith, who took that beautiful mark earlier in the Good game. Kick. Mitch Clark comes out full chest and takes the mark. It's one of the few times we've seen Mitch yeah. Clark lead like oh, that. I know. We just want more of it from him, don't we? He's going to bomb it long, and the only bike back is the That's seven an footer. Extraordinary kick. <laughs> Joel Selwood puts his hands up and says, What are you doing? Uh, look, at, look at him. Oh, McFarlane gave it to him, and he oh. has gone after McFarlane. That was the outboy said, get up. Yeah, well, he went down a bit easy, Luke McFarlane, but I think Mitch Clark was frustrated with himself well, for an still ordinary going kick. On back yeah. here. Keep an eye on that one. Mitch Clark and McFarlane off the ball. It's a bit late to get aggressive for Mitch <laughs> Clark, though, when you're, you're getting touched up and it's been a quiet old day. Don't let your frustrations... Oh, oh he's, he's just, just jumping jump punched. Yeah. Yeah. You get rubbed out yeah, here. The, run, the runner's just running out right now. Just the to umpire's sell him looking. He won't let go. It should be a free kick at least because yeah, he's not, be. not entitled to keep jumper punching a bloke and hanging on to the jumper. Well, if you hold on within outside five metres of the ball, it's a free kick. Correct. And the umpire should step in and do something. So Mitch Clark getting frustrated there. He was uh, told exactly by the Fremantle players what they thought of his long bomb. They weren't impressed, I would have thought. Got to be impressed with this scoreboard right now, Fremantle. They have had an awesome start to 2015. And Ross Lyons' men right now go to head to the Derby next week. Chock full of confidence. Ballantyne blasts it to Pavlich. He just keeps on keeping on the path. Knocks this down. That's a little too high, you yeah. think, against oh. Harry Taylor. And he get away with no that one. No free to Neil. Selwood in the middle of it. And he was a little angry, Selwood. But it's interesting to see the frustration of the Geelong players. Yeah. And sometimes when you have to deal with your own mortality as a football team, uh, and you find it as a player as you get older in your career and you don't start getting much of the ball, you tend to get a bit cranky and bother. a bit grumpy. <laughs> I, know, I didn't. I know a lot of people yeah. that I've played with and against did. One of our colleagues, Alice Lynch, did too, didn't he? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Pavlich steals that back. Enright. So 20 minutes gone this final term. The Cats are still goalless in this quarter. Brilliant chase. tackle to ball. Yeah. Hard attack. Ran him down. Kept the ball in the area. And the Cats have only kicked two goals in this second half. How does he get away with this one, Harry Taylor? Watch the right Ooh. arm. 
Oh, he cops one there. Then he, then he says, if I'm copping one, someone else is copping one. There's been a virtuoso performance, though, by the Fremantle Dockers. And uh, as we said, going into this long time since the Cats have started underdogs in a game down here at Simmons Stadium. They've done that today. And, well, the bookies knew what they were talking about. Yeah. Fife again. Just love the way he plays his football. And so, too, that man who's coming off the ground. Beautiful punch from Corey Enright to get the ball over the line out of bounds. Dwayne, I know you have all the numbers at hand. How old is Nat Fife? Uh, I don't I'm actually... I'll tell, tell you. He's around around about I'll tell you. Right? He's 23. 23. See, what scares me is he might still be getting better. Yeah. Oh, I mean, a kid. Where, where's, the, where's the ceiling as far as where his game goes to? It's, he's a star already, arguably the best player going around the competition form-wise. So... He's Who's played, going to stop him and where does it stop? He's played 94 games, Jase. He's 23 years of age. He's just entering his prime. He's 24 in uh, what will be second semi-final week, so the 18th of September. Yep. Ooh. His next five years could be just at a level few of us have ever seen. I hope so. I hope someone else takes yeah. it to another level. It's, uh, they're great to watch. He yeah. is exciting to watch. You come to the football to, to watch him play. Bike alongside him there. Gregson's uh, played a good game of footy today, hasn't he? The young fella in only his second quite, match. Yeah, quite a second half, Ed. Yeah. Very, very good early. It's always hard when a midfield starts to run over the top of you when you're a young player. Guthrie takes it to the line. So here is Geelong's next four. Chris Scott trying to resurrect this team. As I mentioned, they could be two and two. They've got the Gold Coast and North Melbourne, both Simmons Stadium games coming up, then Richmond and Collingwood at the MCG. The very games next week, Absolutely. haven't they, the next yep. four weeks? So they could be back on track. I'm not quite buying they're going to drop down and rebuild. I didn't say drop down. I said they were in a rebuild. Right. It's got nothing to do with where they are in the ladder. Right. I'm just saying what's going on. They are rebuilding their team. All right. I can see this is still being a premiership window. They yeah, can they keep can it alive. It Smets, Stanley... Little toe poke because they're a lot better than this to Cats. Fremantle are just very, very good right now. Hawkins. Nobody forward of it. You've got Gregson running quickly and you've got Clark running down there. But And he goes to Gregson. A oh, good kick. Because he's virtually encircled by purple jumpers. They've got all the numbers. Sits it up, hoping for Clark. He's up and good Clark. It's got to be a good mark if you've got your opponent, Luke McFarlane, there, plus Aaron Sandlin's loose in defence, and you're still able to outmark both of them. Unfortunately, it's just been few and far between. You can see the little nick above the left eye after the head clash with Joel Selwood, Selwood earlier. But this is a quality mark. Have a look at the two opponents directly against him. Yes. Neither could spoil. It is a good mark. He's a bit of colour on his body, isn't he? Yes, he's got some artwork. He's got some artwork. But... Um, Good to see him mark the ball, and if I was sort of maybe coach of the Cats, I'd make him and Hawkins separate more on a more permanent basis. They're no good competing against each other, Jason. And that's the Cats' first goal of the final term with 43 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, I think, some, I think sometimes you struggle as a key forward if you've got two of them playing deep rather than the traditional one out of the square and one more as a traditional centre-half forward. I think that... that in itself gives you the idea of space that you're starting a lot further apart and then it gives you more options in terms of where you're going to lead. And that was a very good quality mark, yeah. wasn't it? And uh, should be able to do it more often. They should just got to work out a relationship. There's some of the artwork on Mitch Clark <laughs> before the game is he's getting his ankle strapped. And that was a ripping mark and a good goal to finish on. So the last 40 seconds of the game... Both clubs want to get off without any injuries more than anything at the moment because the Fremantle Dockers have booked the four points and have done it in emphatic style here today at Simmons Stadium. Ball goes over the line out of bounds. That man, Hill, has just had a ripping game of football. They lead by 44 points. They may not get many injuries, uh, Ed, but they're going to have a few bruises, aren't they, the Cats? Yeah. So let's throw in. Of course, the big, uh, big one we want to find out is Zach Clark. Just uh, went off that knee injury. Just didn't look good at all. Hopefully just a, a little twinge on what has already been a bad knee for him. So Guthrie slams the ball on the boot. Last 13 seconds. Can they get another one to Catters? Paul Smith goes in hard.
Clark. Five seconds, four seconds. Was he pushed in the back? No, says the umpire. And that'll do us. Round two, and the Fremantle Dockers have a big win down at Simmons Stadium, away from home. They win by 44 points. Probably looking at the best on ground. Really. Well, that's a good sign just to see Zach Clark up and walking about. He's taken the ice pack off the knee. The strapping's gone. So let's hope it's perhaps not anywhere near as serious as it may have looked initially. No, they wouldn't let him walk like that if they, uh, there's so. any doubt. I wouldn't think so. Matty Pavlich, another terrific game from him. Just keeps getting the job done. 18 possessions and a couple of goals for the Dockers. Skipper Barlow was good. Five probably best on, as you said, 36 touches and three goals. Mundy had 39. Bala had 31 and three goals. I think they'd all be in the votes, wouldn't you? Mm. A lot of good players. All their, their midfield dominated, yeah. didn't it? And that was the... Uh... Stephen Hill, 29 and two goals. Yeah. They, got, they got an exceptional tally of goals from the midfield. Midfield, yeah. They had over 50% of their goals for the half-time from midfield. 3-0 and um, continued to run and get easy balls through the middle of the ground and actually get inside 50 and get uh, shots on goal themselves Let's most go. of the game. Sorry, Bomber, let's go down to Cameron Mooney. He's with the bloke we think has just put his second three-vote performance in two games in the book. Well, no, we were just talking about maybe just put the second uh, game in a row. Now you've got three votes. And, look, it was just quite clinical from you guys today, wasn't it? I thought we were pretty good. Our pressure mm. around the ball. We watched that Hawthorne... Uh, sorry, the Port Adelaide game last night. We just saw how fierce Sydney were. So we wanted to bring that to life today. I thought we were pretty decent for four quarters. Look, he knew they were going to come out extremely tough after last week's big loss to Hawthorne. And... Really, after half time, he just completely shut them out of the game. Yeah, they're a quality outfit. We knew they'd respond, and, and they were pretty good all day. So we thought our hit inside and then sort of stopped their run on the outside and put some scoreboard pressure on. So we're, we're pretty happy with the performance. Have you noticed the fitness levels that have gone right up with you guys? I mean, after half time, you really blew them away. The attack of the game is sensational at the moment. You've had over 400 possessions. It's, it's not stats that you usually hear for about Fremantle. Yeah, we've tweaked our ball use a little bit. We're a little bit more free-flowing and getting the ball in the hands of our runners, Pierce and Hill. So um, it's working so far. It's round two. It's a long season ahead. Hey, not bad for a guy, uh, for a team that's supposed to be too old and too slow. Too old, too slow, they said. No, we're going all right. <laughs> good on you, mate. Good stuff, Thanks, mate. Thanks, Cheers. Too old, too slow. They said that about Hawthorne for about five years. Jason, you get winning? <laughs> yeah, I loved, it. I loved his comments. He said, look, we looked at Sydney's performance against Port. You benchmark yourself against the good teams, not just the good teams, but you, you look at the best teams, best performances, and then you say, that's where they're setting the bar, that's where we have to get to. So we saw what they did against Port, let's go and see what we can do against the quality opposition in Geelong down at Simmons Stadium. And I think you've got to give them ticks on just about every front, the Dockers, today. Absolutely, to win here, and they've made it a habit now almost, haven't they, to win at um, School Stadium, or yes, Simmons Stadium. So... Uh, yeah, they're a good club. Um, and Rossi's a good coach, isn't he? He must be a very, very good coach. I think that counts for a lot. I, I know that you've got a good one at Hawthorne, Alistair Clarkson, but I think that the modern tactical game, if you've got a, an exceptional coach like Ross Lyon obviously is, the players believe in his methodology, I think it's worth a lot. This Fremantle team might be old. Yeah, they've got a couple of old guys and... The few thought Matthew Pavlich might be in the last year of his career. He looks as good as ever. He does, but they've got some good young players coming through too. Absolutely. So they've got a good, good balance of experience and youth. Love their midfield, though. Their oh. midfield's super, isn't it? Like, it's a, it, it nearly have to be one of them. Oh, it's probably not as classy as some of them, yep. but Runs as far deep. as um, hard games. Let's go down to Cameron Mooney. Thanks, Eddie. Down here with Matty Pavlich. Matty, must be very proud of the way you guys have started this season. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, you know... Port Adelaide and Geelong, two very, very good teams who we respect highly, and to start the way we have is pleasing. Spoke to Fife about the way that you guys are attacking at the moment, and I guess it was something that you spoke about at pre-season that you wanted to do more, and 400 possessions plus today, that's, that's very unfremental-like. <laughs> oh, it's funny you say that. We have been trying to get a bit more um, you know, offence into our game and, and play a bit more fluid, and um, you know, I thought we were really impressive, but really our defence was strong all day, so the boys are waiting for us. Yeah, I'm going to have to let you go, mate. Go and sing that song. Well done, Thank mate. You. Yep, the boy's waiting for him there. They're giving him a bit of hurry up. Wouldn't blow out a candle, Pat. <laughs> I reckon Cam Mooney was the, he, he was the closest checking uh, player on Matthew Pavlich all day. <laughs> followed him off at halftime, followed him off at the end of the game. And we'll come back for the Fremantle Dockers song because it was a magnificent performance today. Away from home at the fortress that is Geelong, they won by 44 points.
What a day for the Fremantle Dockers. And that man, Nate Fife. Three votes without a doubt in the world. He could have six in the Brownlow already. Certainly, he probably have six in the best and fairest of the Fremantle Dockers. And Super Pav living up to his name. One of the greatest players of his era. 9 6 60 the Cats. 15 14 104. 29 scoring shots to 15. It was the Fremantle Dockers by 44 points. They won every quarter. They won the first quarter by seven points, the second quarter by five points, and then it was a big third quarter where they kicked seven goals one to two goals two, and that's when the game was split wide open. The last quarter, well, it pretty much ran the clock down and played a very, very professional game of football. Mark Thompson and Jason Dunstall, our special comments men, two of the most credentialed in the game. What were your thoughts? Well, the numbers tell a good story. It was a comprehensive performance from the Dockers. They beat them inside they beat them outside they really just nutted them on every quantifiable um, area of the game and if you were Ross Lyon you walk away pretty content with where you are if you're Chris Scott you're very very worried but we saw a very powerful side today Bomber. Yeah we did we um, good side you say? A very powerful yeah, side. Yeah very yeah. powerful big strong and we always thought their midfield was big and strong and tough and that where they'd get an advantage and it certainly did come that way. That's not a pitch invasion, guys. Oh, that oh. is old-time football. The AFL giving it back to our supporters <laughs> again. Look at that. Everybody running into the centre and it's a magnificent scene here now at Simmons Stadium as people are out there having a kick of the football. I want to find the person who told us about 10 years ago that it was the cost of insurance that stopped this wonderful tradition. I remember sitting at the footy one time in the old days and uh, with an international guest, and, and they jumped up. It was a, a British, it's an invasion. It's an invasion. <laughs> it wouldn't happen in, in soccer, would it? No, well, they do, but they take the goal time with them. That's but it's the always happened here. It's Simmons fantastic. Stadium's never stopped it. Yeah. I, know, I know some families who come down 10 minutes to go in the last quarter because their kids can then come on. If they haven't got a game ticket, they can come on and have kick to That's kick great. for so half even, an hour. Even when I was there, like for years, they've like Absolutely. always had yeah, kick to kick You've always been telling them yeah. off or praising them in the rooms after the game bomber. But this, well, it must this have been insurance then, Ed. <laughs> and there's a fantastic... I mean, the, the old wonderful. suburban ground is magnificent. Before the game here, there were old people, 60s and 70s, who were meeting their friends for the first time since last year's last home game. Oh, how's Mabel? Yeah, oh, that the little chatting. bit of fruitcake. Oh, it's fantastic. Up. It really is a great atmosphere. <laughs> Mabel. It, the, the game didn't quite go to plan, no. but it was a magnificent afternoon. If you're a Fremantle supporter, they are one of the most watchable teams in the competition right now. Yeah. And they're the kind of team that you look at, you draw next week to see who you've got. Have I got Frio? Want to go and watch them. They are magnificent. I and I think the great got... thing about this uh, today is exactly, it's about a football club, yeah. not just a football team. Mm. And we can get to, we can miss the point sometimes. It's, it's it's a lot broader than just the wins and the losses, and this is fantastic. If you were going to go and watch Freeman on next week, this bloke <laughs> yeah. is the bloke you'd want to go and just put the camera on. Have a look at this bloke in action. He can do everything, yeah, Bomber. He can. He, he marks the ball, he gets it at ground level, he kicks <laughs> the goals, he tackles, he does the lot. Yes, he certainly does. He's a quality player. He's doesn't matter how much pressure he's under, does he? And um, he gets clean, and his possessions uh, they have a lot of influence on the game, the outcome of the game, don't they? Whether it's a spectacular mark, kick around the goal, or just winning a clearance, he's a spectacular player. I can't remember the last time I saw one individual have 25 contested possessions. 25 of 36 possessions were contested. That's unheard of. If you get half and half, that's a terrific performance. But that is a ridiculous number. In fact, I might have to do a little bit of research because I don't reckon yeah. that's happened too many times, if at all. He had 36 disposals at 82% with his kicks. 17 kicks. 82% under pressure, yep. under contested pressure. And three as goals. Jason said, kicked three goals, one and one out of bounds. There you go. Amazing. And then it's... Um you know, Mundy's had a lot more of the ball, hasn't he? Yeah. But uh, didn't get. You don't notice him as much. You really notice the uh, five. But having five be so good helps Mundy and yeah. helps Barlow. Yep. Yep. And all of a sudden, you've got a couple of guys in the midfield who are getting plenty of the ball because so many people are mesmerised by where's five. Yeah. You know, you've got a good side, don't you? When when you don't know who to tag, and, yeah. and Hill had the tag for a long while, and now they've gone and moved on to five, which frees up Barlow and frees up Hill. And and the bloke who's happy about that more than anyone on earth at the moment is Ross Lyon. Let's go down to Cam Mooney. Rossi, that's what uh, spoke to a couple of boys on the ground. Very clinical, the way that you played today. Yeah, I thought it was a professional performance. Um, we know Geelong have had some challenges, a period of transition, but you still need to come down here. You know, big trip, and uh, they're really tough, and we knew they'd be fierce, and they were, and so would, I thought, led them superbly. And, um, but we worked our way through their pressure, and I thought our use and our entry stuff was pretty good. And it just would have been nice to finish a bit better. 
spoke to you during the pre-season about you know, what you wanted to do over the pre-season. You said attack more. I thought today you, you attacked very well. Yeah, we're playing a bit of, I don't know, up tempo, Brent, but we're moving the ball pretty well. Um, and we're working on all the teams all the time. And there's some good models out there to learn off, and we've worked hard on it. And, look, I think 55 entries, 29 shots, without getting too number-focused. But it was, would have been nice to finish a little bit stronger, but we'll take it. And already we're focused squarely on the, the derby this week with West Coast. So it's a brutal competition. Mate, two of zip, great start. Congratulations, Rossi. Well done. Thanks, Cam. Cheers. Yeah, two great wins there for the Fremantle Dockers with the Derby just to keep the interest going. It's going to be a huge game of football. What a build-up it's going to be in Perth this week. And the Fremantle Dockers just looking magnificent. The final scores, by the way, 15-14, 104. That's 44 points victory over Geelong. 9-6-60. When you win, you get four points and you get to sing the song. Here it comes for the Fremantle fans. Oh! Oh, did you actually give me an Easter egg? Yep. Oh, oh, I am. Oh. It's a potato. It's a How long did that take? <laughs> oh, gee. Yeah. Has he been working on that all summer? <laughs> Mate. That... Oh, you're all giddy. I uh, love the band, Zoe. What do you got for tonight, Chase? Uh, we'll be at it again. 7.30 <laughs> tonight, going hammer and tong. But, uh, no, uh, it's fun just to wind the weekend down. Have a look at... Some of the things that happen on the footy field, but also take a, a, a look at the lighter side of the game. Uh, we love it, mate. It's a great show. Sit there with the kids on a Sunday night on the couch. It's magnificent. Uh, Bomber, thanks for being part of the show today. Mate, uh, what did it feel like for you to come back to the Cattery today? Oh, it was a good feeling. I enjoyed it. Um, I've been back watching games that uh, just snuck in the back door and snuck in a little chair and hidden away. But, uh, yeah, I certainly come through the front door today and, <laughs> and uh, it's good to sort of comment in commentate on your ex-team. Just we're talking, we're having a little debate during that last quarter about where you see Geelong at the moment. Uh, and when we say rebuild, as, as, as Dwayne said, you don't have to go to the bottom. I think they're still very much in contention, but they are bringing through a whole new list of players. And some of the guys, the 2011 team, they're not there. They're sitting up in the stands with us these days. Yeah, well, it, there's a lot of other clubs, top clubs, that have got a lot of old players in their team. So it's not the problem of having too many old ones. It's about the uh, the old ones passing on that knowledge and experience and then giving the opportunities to the younger ones and then taking it up. And uh, they've played two hard sides so far this year. So yeah. it's, uh, it's, it will get easier for them. And I'm sure they'll win a lot more games. Yep. They'll learn from that today, won't they, Dwayne? Absolutely. It's been an absolute delight, though, to be here to see Fremantle. I saw Fremantle last week against Port Adelaide as well. I'm heading over for the Derby next oh, week. Oh, good luck. It's, it's what been a magnificent to see them play. And with Nat Fife in this kind of form, they are going to be watchable right throughout the season. Before we go across to Eddie Hadson, and Jason, one final question to you. Put your Hawthorne hat on for a moment. As a Hawthorne bloke looking at that game today, Fremantle, it's going to be a great game when those two teams play each other. Oh, it is. They're a definite threat. There's no doubt about that. I think we've seen Sydney put their hand up. Freo put their hand up. We're waiting for a couple of others, maybe Port Adelaide, to get back up and running. Uh, North Melbourne, we don't know how good they're going to be. But there's at least three cracking teams at the moment in the race. Eddie... Bomber, your drivers are here waiting for you, so we'll let you get in the car. Jason, you <laughs> hit down the, 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 the highway for bounce. We cleared, the, we cleared the ground for the chopper oh, yesterday. See you tonight to, on bounce, but uh, the feast <laughs> of footy continues. Anthony Hudson waiting for you at Eddie Head Stadium. <laughs>